old, groaning like a geezer. everybody am i pixelating okay i'm good uh welcome everybody it is once again time for your favorite draw stream on the interwebs gray beards studio i am aaron lopresti i am always joined by uh several of my favorite artist friends and um we have a special guest star today but we will meet in just one moment but let's bring the crew in and get this ball rolling uh all the way from other than here it's David Williams, or at least his icon. Well, uh... <laughs> Are you? Is that how you're going to draw today? You're not going to. Uh, we're going to have to guess what you're doing. No, of course not. Okay. okay. I just didn't want to give anybody like a epileptic seizure. This time. Oh, okay, so you're you're actually the couple people that wrote in and complained about you. You're actually being sensitive to their needs, is what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Come next week, it, that's all out the window. Okay, so at least one week. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's bring in someone who's really old, but really cool. Scary Martin. There he is. G money. What is that? Is that a fart machine? <laughs> uh, or I'm young at heart. He's yeah. young at heart. The maturity level on the show is just going through the roof. Um, let's bring in a guy with an epic beard. We don't really know because we never get to see his epic beard, but he claims to still have it. Guys, sometimes known as Sasquatch, it's uh, it's Kelsey Shannon. There he is. I got an epic. You can see it right there. There, there it is. is. <laughs> I'm getting burger in it currently. Like you are like you're so totally old school. You don't even have like a, 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 a like an avatar. You like you'd like draw hand draw it and hold it in front of the screen. I'm old school. That's right. Yeah, it comes totally with the old. beard. You're blotting out Gary's name. Yeah. So oh no! You, I have to amend this. Uh, I was gonna say, the, who are you ticked off at at this week? Oh, well, Aaron, of course. Yeah. <laughs> You'll see when I get done here. I gotta let this dry, and then I'm gonna amend this. We're gonna get to the oh. bottom of this uh, faux pas of his. Yeah. Oh. Okay. All right. Well, <clears throat> gentlemen, we have a guy that we've been trying to get on the show for a couple months now. I've been twisting his arm. He finally caved in. Everybody in the chat, please welcome our very special guest today, Mr. Larry Stroman. There he is. Hey, Larry. What? Oh, look at you got spooky lighting on you now. I thought you were dead. <laughs> Larry. Oh, what up, what up my neighbor? Hey, hey, hey. Watch it now. Watch it now, David. Uh, Larry, so um, we uh, we did a poll this week. And it was all we thought. Let's let's cater it to Larry. So we had people choose between uh, X Factor, Alien Legion, and then uh, uh, Big Booty Tribe. And uh, <laughs> X Factor was the winner. So we'll be doing characters from X Factor today as sort of our tribute to you. Thank you for joining us. Nice. <laughs> that's, all that's, all nice. that's all he's got. <laughs> you need my response to everything. Nice. <laughs> he's gaslighting because Larry's very verbose. Yeah. I've, I've had women stand in front of me and take their clothes off, and I say, nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, I would have been like, oh, God. Now, uh, I did. I I saw last night. I I, I sent the link to you uh, late last night, which didn't and, work on my phone. Well, I saw that you messaged at Facebook, and you said, "I think you said nice, maybe I don't know, or okay, or something." <laughs> oh, yeah. But it was yeah. like two thirty in the morning, and I thought this guy's <laughs> worse than me. <laughs> uh, my body has no sense of time. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just kind of you get up when you get up, you go to sleep when you go to sleep. Exactly. All right. 
Um, okay, I got a question for you. We can't we can't do the whole as much as I would love to sit here and interview you for the whole show. I do have a question for you though. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> hey, Look at Kelsey. Geez, man. Look at Kelsey. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, oh, now it's been amended. Yeah, that's right. On, on the poll, I actually put Alien Nation instead of Alien Legion, but everybody knew what I was talking about. You would do that all the time anyway. Oh, <laughs> like they say, X Force and some X Factor. Yeah. yeah. I didn't expect can... to be in a show with one of those guys, but you know. <laughs> I didn't, didn't know I had to get the names right. Um, so, Larry, you have a very unique an interesting style. And I wanted, I want to know who you would credit as sort of your influences that helped shape the way you draw. Not really anybody, just a little bit of everybody. You didn't have like I, one uh, person that sort of grow, like growing up and looking at uh, a lot of artists, you know, I can right off tell where that stuff came from. And I didn't want to be that guy. Right. You know, I didn't want to be a guy with half my career of somebody telling me that my stuff looked like somebody else's stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I yeah. felt if I if I just took a little bit pieces of this and that and stuff from other artists from other countries that I could come up with something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, I fell flat on my face for many years. I couldn't figure out what I was doing. That's very so similar to David's career. Happening by accident. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's nothing like mine. <laughs> you know? He's still falling on his face. <laughs> oh. So what ends up happening is that people who look at your stuff start to define what your stuff will eventually become. Because you try something, and they say, oh, I like that. Then you keep it. You get rid of something else. Then you add something else in, and they might not like that. You get rid of that, add something. They like it. You keep that. So that's how it ended up being just an accumulation of just stuff that people reacted to. Hmm. And you're still going, right? You're still like refining, still. Uh, not that. so much now. No. Because uh, I know after a period of time of people saying they like your stuff, they're not really telling you anything, you know, so you become kind of stale after a while. You just kind of do things the same way because it's been working and you don't really know what else to do because nobody's telling you something that's not working. You know, so a fan says, oh, I don't like the way you draw this. I don't like what you draw this. And you get rid of it. You try something else. Mm -hmm. you, you're basically, nobody's really saying much of anything about much of anything. You just, your stuff just kind of stays the same. So, so maybe you're not like, you're not like Aaron. If somebody says, I like your stuff, you say, well, what do you like about it? <laughs> Michael Golden they, said that to me. You know, I never I asked him. that. I never asked that question. If somebody says they like something, I never ask them why. Ever. I would think that if like nobody say think. anything, you're uh, you're perfect. You're just there. You're just Not right. That you're perfect is that just stuff <laughs> isn't really bad. You know. Yeah. Well, well I think, yeah. I guess you, you need had, to be. You need to be I've good or bad. Say they don't like my stuff, but if somebody says they don't like my stuff, I'm okay with people who say. Man, I just don't like that guy's stuff. I'm bothered by the people who nitpick on what they don't like about uh, my stuff. Mm. <laughs> See, because that's the stuff you you think, you know, you go to sleep at night, and you're sitting there thinking, man, three guys said they didn't like the way I draw hair. So now I gotta figure out what to do. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. You you act like it doesn't bother you, but then you you're right, you go to bed and you're like, Oh, my hair stinks. The thing is, <laughs> every, everything bothers us as artists yeah, because that, we really right. want to be accepted, you know. That's right. Well, there were 20 people that said you draw great hair. It's just that one dude you can't get yeah, out of your head. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes the one dude makes all the difference. Yeah, it does. True. And that's what most man. people don't understand, especially editors, that, that artists by nature are insecure. And and an editor that knows What do you that, mean by that? You're doing a great job. <laughs> <laughs> Not you, Kelsey. Like, oh, one of, okay. One of the greatest compliments I think I ever got well, I had it. I got I got the same compliment many times, but you know, dudes, you know, they'll look at this like, oh man, look at look at that woman's big butt. You did this, and you did that, you did whatever. But then some woman would come up to me at a show and say, "I like that you draw women that look like me." Yeah, that is like the greatest compliment to me. You know? Can I get your number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like the model for me? <laughs> right. 
<laughs> well, let me take a moment here and uh, let's see who's in the chat, and then we'll get we'll get rolling with our show and tell. Then we'll start drawing. Um, let's see. Your blackjack is here. Uh, Schism. Uh, he says, I blame Aaron for writing Alien Nation, and you're right. It is my fault. I take full responsibility for that. Um, and let's see. Our creative Faye is here. Uh, Ronan, Geek Hero Bubba, Repairman Jack is here. Uh, Red Sands of Mars is joining us. Kel Razor, Brian Norton, all the way from Japan, says, congratulations, Aaron, on your Fragtober win. It's about time the robbery ended. That's wait, the kind of support oh, I'm looking for. Yeah, we're going to talk about that too, Mark. Oh, well, we're going to talk about some. it. Yeah. Uh, George Bonnie 90 is here. John, Bill Wiest, congratulating me once again on my victory last night. <laughs> Kelsey. <laughs> <laughs> Fane Lowlife is here. Byron Smith, Petty Mob, Brian Rubenacher. I love saying that, Brian the Rubenacher. Um, Corin Zenith, all the way from Australia, is here. Lord Henson Comics Gator is here. Bill Wiest, I already said that. Leg Kick is here because Leg Kick is almost always here. Marcus Killigrew, our purveyor of all things pop culture knowledge. Holy Hand Grenades, uh, Fox Molders joining us. Uh, Larry, you're bringing them in, man. Uh, let's see. Iodine 74, Rodney Ulibarri's here. Philip Tajale. Tajale? Philip Tajale. Tamale. Tajale? Tamale? I, oh. tamale, you say you say to jolly i say tamale let's call the whole thing off uh <laughs> Razor, ronin uh la, 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 la. who else we got anybody there that uh a lot of so kelsey is that's an x factor character <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i've already got a head start <laughs> this is uh havoc you know when he's on the toilet <laughs> Okay, Mr. K is here. Antonio Rachillo is here. Uh, he says, I wanted to see Larry draw Jugger Grimrod. I don't even know who that is. I assume Larry does. That's uh, the main, main character on Alien Legion. Alien Legion, oh, okay. Yeah. Craig Smith the second says, I remember Larry when he done X Factor. Man, the memories. His work was amazing in that book, and his Tribe comic was good also. There you go. Thank you, Craig. Uh, yeah, okay. your X Factor was amazing, and the other one was, was good. Yeah, it was, yeah. Tribe was okay, too, he says. Um, uh, let's see. Eric Boyd says, Alien Legion would have been great, but I'll settle for X-Factor. Uh, Slacker, Slacker <laughs> R23. Eh, let's see. That's I think I got everybody. There's a lot of commentary in there, but, you know, I can't read all of you guys. Uh, Jabez is here. Kelly, 1481. Um, let's see. Paulus Arts is here. Corn Zenith for $5. Thank you so much for the super chat. Says, how's your hand strength, fellas? Congratulations, Aaron, for taking out the front. Hand strength. I'm not sure what he's. I'm not sure what he's implying. Um, yeah. Shiro is here. Uh, Paul Brillart, our resident uh, engineer, is here. He says, "Catch you in reruns." I guess we bored him already. <laughs> I'm out. Uh, Pork Hunt is here. Uh, How to draw comics by Dan Lawless is here. How about that? What? Hey, Dan. Hendon Schnelli, One Slick Dude. They're just pouring in. Peter Orchard Studios, George Liqueur. Zaid Comics, that's Phil Diaz is here. Uh, David Alicia, Lopez killed it last night. Of course, he's referring to me. Uh, Agent Cub says, when is Tribe coming back, Larry? When is Tribe coming back? Uh, soon. Yeah. Soon, oh, I didn't What's expect that? to hear that. Yeah, how about that? Um here we need a color uh bill for five dollars thank you phil uh yo guys excited the sh yo guys excited that? the show today someone better draw a strong guy well it's either going to be me or larry so we'll see larry gets first choice so um, larry you let me know if you need a colors for tribe i'll drop aaron like nothing man uh, you <laughs> son, of a, aaron. You son of a yeah. this is just his way to get a raise man it's just not uh, <laughs> is it working uh, no, not yet. Oh, okay. We'll see what Larry says. Um, all right. So let's take a minute here, go around the horn and do a little show and tell, because I know everybody's got some stuff to show. Uh, so David, we'll start with you. You'll have to turn your camera on to participate. But uh, what have you got for us? But I actually sent you something 
that oh my should... gosh why do you make me do all the work why can't you just show the stuff <laughs> because yourself? it's i'm on my wife's computer i told you wait till the show I starts start. to do this dude. i don't have all my files uh, see it's just there's always it's always an excuse see this larry i'm sorry it's so unprofessional um <laughs> Oh my gosh, you got a ton of stuff, dude. Yeah, some of it's Larry stuff, but the three pieces right there, uh, that was that Kevin piece. So yeah, the pencil, pencil inks, oh. and Kelsey's colors. Oh yeah, that came out all good. Right, hang on, hang on. Okay, so that's all Larry's stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. Okay, so you want me to show the cover you did with uh, of Kevin? Yes. All right. And then I'll show uh, the next thing on my camera what I'm working on. Right. Okay, so you're gonna okay. All right, I got you. All right, so we'll start with this. Mm -hmm. I want you to know, Larry, we're usually less organized than this. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, there we go. Okay. So this is that magazine that no one can remember the name of, not even Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you're supposed to show the pencils first and then progress oh, to the yeah, inks no you know what we've seen the pencils look at this it's beautiful you start from the best <laughs> and then we go to the rest there you go <laughs> kelsey put his foot in it both feet and he's just like bah! Yeah, dude why aren't you doing coloring to... like that on my stuff oh. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, I'll try harder. <laughs> yeah, would you please? Hey, hey, I appreciate it. This, I, this I have to admit the likenesses are it's stronger with the colors. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what yeah. you're saying is Kelsey saved David again. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you my secret. Um, this is reparations. Magic. It was reparations. <laughs> <laughs> I owe, you know, big time. My family, you don't even want to know. Uh, Zade Comics for another five bucks. Thank you, Phil. Also, Larry, welcome to the show. Huge fan of that babe with the fat booty in the inside cover of Tribe, specifically that. It didn't say booty. It said bootay. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I not read that correctly? Okay. No, it it's Bibbly Boutte. Oh, it is Boutte. And it's fat with a PHT. You know, so you know this is... Uh, there's a story about when they, when Disney was uh, doing um, Bambi and they designed all these characters and everything. And then there was this throwaway character that they put in whose name was Thumper. Right, the rabbit. And then Thumper ended up being the most popular character <laughs> in the movie. And it, in, in Tribe, it was the same way. I had already designed all the characters and everything. And then just for the joke of it, I just I just sent this picture of this woman that I drew. <laughs> and the first person who reacted to it was a friend of mine's uh, secretary. And then I was like, well, I guess I'll keep this. I guess I'll keep this in. And then she ended up being the most popular character in the whole world. <laughs> That's how it works. That's how it works, man. Um, Joe Ball for five dollars says, Hey, chat, hey, panel, check out my book, Death, Death, Death. Sounds like a real lighthearted affair. Um, <laughs> but, uh, Joe, uh, I don't know if you can post a link there in the, the chat for that. Uh, but Joe Ball has a campaign out there, wants us to know about it, and there it is called Death, Death, Death. Oh, um, wait a minute here, Elsie, <laughs> can you pronounce it this name for me? It's probably Bibbly Bob. Bibbly yeah. Bob, there he is. I see you. Yeah. All right, good. I'm here giving her an arrest, Kelsey. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, all right, David, this is this turned out great, you guys. Honestly, um, what else you got for us, David? I know you got. Oh, there, there it is. is. Hey, what is this <laughs> exactly? Whoa! Now this is a, a project uh, fearsome uh, that Ethan Van Skyver is developing he has this new book and he assigned me to be the artist on it nice and uh that's what i'm like, talking about on 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 kings yeah <clears throat> and those are so, great man oh thanks and so i had to redesign the main character because he wanted him to look a little bit kind of tim burton-ish kind of grunge kind of uh 
and I put a little Trent Reznor type vibe. <laughs> in See, there. Trent Reznor, if he thing. wasn't successful, that's what. Yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite thing is that face on that guy. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and he's he's supposed to be sleep deprived because every time he goes to sleep he turns into this skull thing and he sees all this crazy stuff and but he's solving murders and stuff so it, yeah. it's pretty pretty interesting i'm sleep deprived but i don't have that hair that's the thing <laughs> <laughs> and i i put a whole bunch of uh, spatter in here for john malin uh, pissed him off yeah. yeah oh man i forgot to find my splatter pages yeah oh. Those look, look great, those. man. Seriously, that's really good looking stuff. Look at that skull thing. I love that. That costume looks like it's going to be a real pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly right. It is. It but is. worth it if you can pull it off in the whole book. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is basically going to be his spawn. It is going to be something cool like that because the story sounds cool from what he was telling me so far. So looking Very forward nice. to doing more and sharing more with everybody once more stuff comes out yeah that looks great um okay gary uh what do you got um i'm working on a big commission and i can't show that so i decided to pull out some other stuff like commission stuff that i've been working on this is oh. uh this is what 11. Well, that's what hey. from, uh, strange uh whatever. yeah stranger things yeah stranger I, things. I this for my granddaughter Oh, wow. um, Never seen then, a single episode of that show, but I've seen every movie it was based on. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Talk about splatter! Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah, she so, takes yeah. the pleasure from the serpent. <laughs> <laughs> is this from uh, is nice. uh, Blade Runner? Yeah. Oh, is Blade Runner? Okay. Yeah, that snake is nice. Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, the snake is what I was concentrating on more than anything else. If I nail the snake, who cares about the rest? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't even need to take the girl out. Just do the snake. Yeah. If that's if the, the case, camera you... framing was a little lower. Uh, um, if yeah, that's the yeah, case, yeah. You should white out her eyes and make them wall-eyed if you don't care about anything else. <laughs> 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 So I, I'm working on a, a big commission, and it's oh, it's that's right. Really You're going to reveal this like uh, a couple weeks, right? In a couple, yeah. It's, I'm still a couple weeks away. Okay, yeah, I'm, man, I can't wait to see that. Larry, man, you look so dramatic. It's like yeah. I want to, I want to put this in a film or something. You know, it's like, <laughs> he's oh, like the horror. Thing. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> work, but then actually ends up working better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kelsey, what have you got? Well, I'm not sharing any artwork, but I wanted to share since Larry's here. I wanted to embarrass him a little bit and okay. uh, show. I have a, a usually a, this this is a bit of my uh, little table side uh, uh, collection of books uh, that I usually keep for inspiration. Some trash, some good stuff, uh, some classics. You got your Mignolas in here, but uh, you know, a little text, um, all kinds of stuff. But in this, set, oh. Is always these uh, X Factor and Tribe, and I used to have all the Alien Legions, but I don't have those anymore. <laughs> but these uh, these were real special to me at, at a very formative time. And Larry was one of those kinds of uh, creators that didn't sit behind the table at conventions. I went and saw him at a little little tiny uh, uh, convention in Dallas, Texas, and he hung out sitting on the edge of the table and just hung out with us <laughs> shooting the breeze that was, and it was like, back then. yeah yeah <laughs> and i got these signed actually i got those in a box somewhere and i have like maybe five different copies of these but oh there's the, the booty big booty girl okay. Okay. <laughs> but my favorite character uh was always mr uh and i can't remember his name mr cold shoulder or this guy right here uh he, he doesn't what was his name oh like, did, what was Al it out cold. Out cold. Oh, okay. Because I remember him not even telling you in the first issue. It was like they called me a lot of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this book was so exciting for me because it had characters and designs and powers and things that I had never seen in comics before. The color was kick ass. The designs, uh, it was just the best. So I voted for tribes. 
And I may still draw that. I don't care what y'all say. I might draw some tribe. <laughs> well, you know, Kelsey, you usually uh, do your own thing anyway and cheat. No, I'm not hey. do that. It's called uh, working smarter, not harder. <laughs> okay. So is that all you got for me? Yeah, yeah. Larry, do you have anything you want to share? Share? I mean, there's some bits and pieces of stuff I'm working on. Yeah, let's see it, man. You know, women, women with big booties. Oh yeah. And other types of things. The good work. Now wait a minute. This You're is too fast. Art. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. This is tribe. This is tribe. <laughs> what is this doing? new stuff? Characters. Oh man. And. You know, and more women. Not is this? State, wait a minute. Now, is this for the new tribe book that you just teased? Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 there's like oh, oh. Thing here. Look at that. Did you paint that? Yep. yep. Using what? What'd you paint it with? Using um, watercolors. Oh, Was watercolor? Yep. Dude, he blew my mind with this piece uh, for Alien Legion, and it had like all the big guy and like a bunch of different characters on there, and I couldn't figure out how you did it, and I, I never was able to. And it turns out it had a lot of color pencil in it, which I had never seen anybody oh, do. That was that uh, if you're talking about the paintings that I did back then. Yeah. Well, the backgrounds were done with Krylon spray paint. The same stuff what? that graffiti that graffiti artists use. Seriously? Nice. Then uh, I painted over it with acrylic in uh Prismacolor. Mm. So you yeah. laid down Krylon and then colored over the yeah, top the, of that? The fuzzy background was using Krylon paint, which was like I said, the same stuff that the uh graffiti artists use. Right. It's just that that stuff gets all over the place. You gotta mm. if you do it, you gotta stand outside. Because that stuff gets all in the house. Next thing I know is, is yellow paint and purple paint all over different things in the house. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna find. I, I, never, I never learned. I never got good at using an airbrush, so that's why I never actually used the airbrush thing. See, I didn't either. I mean, you, I'd probably go that way. There's probably better paints now that you can oh, use. Oh yeah, there's, there's different things now. God, oh, that's amazing. Uh, Good let's deal. see here. A uh, comics here legend says, Question Larry, great to see you. Did you ever get to work with Frank uh Sirocco on Alien Legion? Is, Sirocco is, is he talking, talking about actual doing a book? Because me and Frank worked on the covers all the time, that's all the covers that we did together. Mm. Okay, well, there you go, comics legend. Here, share my screen. <laughs> uh -oh. oh, wait a minute, okay. Oh, wait a minute. That's no, the wrong no. one. This yeah. One. <laughs> this <laughs> cover. There it is. What is that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was um that was the background is Carlon paint. And I painted over it with acrylic. And some of the highlights are done with uh Prisma color. Man, this still blows my mind. Uh, that's so awesome. Okay, so wait a minute. So you laid down a layer of color over the whole thing. You didn't mask anything. It's just like that was like no, your underpainting. I just do the color first, and then I go and then I draw on top of the color. Right, it makes like an ambient light, like you know, like you and do it, the whole and it thing. Unifies every time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is one of my favorites, man. Crazy, that's I, amazing. See, like that with that explosion from the gun, where yeah. it looks like it's airbrush. It's actually Krylon paint. <laughs> that was, I, I just masked it. I just masked it. Were you just, were you just screwing around looking for a way to do this, or did you learn that from somebody else? I don't know what I was doing. Well, what it is is I uh, <laughs> I originally started off selling stuff on the streets in New York, so I used whatever I had around, and once I got used to using that stuff, it just it just kind of followed me. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. So were you doing art on the streets or were you just like set up on a corner with your art? And no, I was it? selling. I was doing portraits. I was selling, you know, original stuff. I was selling prints, just doing all kinds of different things. See, all these are things that were colored by Frank Sirocco. I didn't. Oh, OK. Any of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are great. These are done probably a blue line, right? Or did he do it right on your art? He just did it right on the art. Oh, man. Mm. So good, man. Yeah, I loved it. I, I love seeing the paints uh, again, man. I, I hope uh, 
I hope you do more of that. There we go. Like Look that, at that one at the top yeah. you got there. That was one of my favorite. That one. That was one of my favorite ones. This one here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is this Frank also? No, that's just me. Oh, that's you man. and your Krylon. Yeah. Yep. Me and my Krylon. <laughs> that's great. I love it. So you're going to be painting today, right? You're going to full color. Yeah, right. yeah. You're going to get the Krylon cans out? No, it, take, it takes a little long. <laughs> oh, well. I can hope. Yeah, I got to work quick so I can watch Larry draw the rest of the show. Right? Now, here's, uh, here's uh, Squib. No pressure, Larry. Squib says that watercolor painting is amazing, Mr. Stroman. So you're getting some respect. That's nice. Absolutely beautiful. So the one you just flashed there that uh, I believe he's talking about. I'm going to need scans uh, of these. Stop. Yeah. Right. Exactly. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take a moment to share some stuff, and then we'll get drawing. Um, see, now I'm just... Oh. I'm just pretty much using watercolor stuff now. So wait a minute, Larry. I got to come back to you. Okay. Oh. Okay. Hang on. Let's. Nice. Oh, man, that's great. Is that a commission? I assume. Uh, yep. That's awesome. Nice, <laughs> David. Why aren't you that good? I know, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I wake up every morning saying that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Just be like Larry. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> all right. So let me show a couple things real quick. I was watching uh, uh, Phantom of the Opera last night, the silent version, of course, and I started working on this, but I haven't got, <laughs> not done yet. But uh, And that was know. always one of the greatest faces ever in movies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Lon Chaney was awesome. That's a great silent movie, too. Yeah. So I'm working on that for some reason. And then I, uh, where's that other piece? Oh, here we go. <clears throat> You're always just working on random stuff. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> You're watching a movie and then you're drawing. Okay, yeah. All right. That, so that is fantastic, by the thank way. Thank you. I did fantastic. that in an hour. An hour, Kelsey. If I'd had two hours, I'd, I'd put color on it. Why don't you put this kind of effort in this show, pal? <laughs> you got two <laughs> hours there. I Dude, I was, like on, no, I was on Fragga's show last night, and I, I hardly <laughs> said a word because I was just like dialed in. I was like, I am not losing for th the third time. <laughs> oh, and, you've uh, been on all three times? Okay. Yep, and I've lost the first two and then i finally won last night see so. now i got a question with this because uh i didn't see fraga's uh but i saw matt's matt killed yeah. it i think he did a great job as well uh yeah. i think but who chose something that you're better that than most people on the planet earth <laughs> they i think it was a fix come on no no yeah. no, no, no no i picked we each got to pick okay a bunch of guys wrote in and gave suggestions and out of those suggestions we each picked one now I picked man thing because I was like, I'm going to win this. So I'm picking man thing bar picked cable. And then, um, yeah, uh, like Dan picked zombify any character. And that's what won oh. the poll. So, oh man. That was his mistake. Yep. Either Big that mistake. or you paint the check cleared. Good job, Aaron. <laughs> 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 All right. And my son, I owed my son a commission. He wanted Mysterio. So I did Ooh. this. In watercolor and ink. I used the Pentel brush pen and then watercolored it. Wow. Yeah, that's great. I, I don't remember that character too much, but what is inside the helmet? Apparently his is head. head. Or is it something else? No, Need it's smoke. his head. <laughs> it's supposed to be his head. So uh, It's a giant vaporizer. <laughs> he's very sweaty in there. Um <laughs> It's a humidifier. Oh, He's a sickly kind of guy. Yeah. So anyway, that's what <laughs> I like I the way you did the cape there. It looks. Uh, well, can't think of like a, it looks kind of choppy, but it, it has a real neat look to it. What I did was I I used my expensive watercolors, not the cheap ones that you <laughs> forced me into buying. And um, <laughs> I so love the cheap ones. I'm hoping so you'll I, send me one so that I don't have to buy another cheap set. You can just send it to me when you're done with it. So anyway, I painted this in purple, and then what I did was I took a toothbrush. And I dipped it in the, the really thick purple paint and splattered the paint, the purple around here. Cause I wanted to create kind of like a fog effect without actually drawing it in. Mm. And then I splattered white all over the place. And then I took the, the pro white and with my brush and I just made like swirly things with it and then dry brushed it so that it, it softened the edges on it. And that's kind of how I got that. Nice. Effect. I was just being nice. I didn't really want to know. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool, man. Son of a. I, mean, I like it getting experimental with it, you know, just trying yeah. things out. Yeah, pulling a Kelsey. Yeah. Um, See how that works. All right, guys, here we go. So, Larry, I'm going to ask you first uh, who are you going to draw? Uh, Robert, that strong guy. Okay. That, I you know, I'm that like, strong you guy. I might throw something else in there. Well, you can throw whatever else you want in there. I just want to make sure that everybody that I'm not duplicating you because we don't want any direct comparisons because that might make me look bad. Um, okay, Kelsey, what are you doing? I am gonna do uh, Madrix because uh, he was uh, he was one of my faves on uh, X Factor, so I'm gonna draw him. Um, David, what are you doing? Oh, who are you doing? Oh my gosh, I'm gonna do Polaris. <laughs> yeah, me Polaris. too. Polaris. I'm. What are you doing? I said me too. Uh, what? Okay, then I'm, oh. I'm, not doing, okay, then I'm not doing Polaris. <laughs> are I'm you gonna do Polaris either. seriously? No. Okay. And you're not going to tell us what you're doing, are you? It's going to be Polaris. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Uh, the mystery. No, no, David, you were doing a good Quicksilver. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I yeah. I was I was thinking Wolfsbane, but I guess I'll do Quicksilver. There you go. All right. Gary, of course, will do nothing as usual and like it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. He should feel that torture. Who's messing with their? Is that you, Kelsey? That's not me. me. That's the FBI. My bad. Oh, it's David messing. Larry takes the tape off of his camera, and you know, they're listening now. Seriously, we're gonna we're gonna crowdfund David so you can get like actual real equipment to do this. Hey, hey. I've come a long way. That's true. You have, but you still got a long way to go. (laughs) He's got a camera that zooms in by itself. That's not bad. Uh. Nordman for $1.99 says first dibs on I don't know whose he's has first dibs on, but we shall see. Uh, see everybody uh-oh. thinks they know what I'm doing, but they I'm getting don't. set up already. Aaron Louvier says Larry's version of Polaris is hands down my favorite. So I guess I, <laughs> I'm already fighting a losing battle here. Um, all right, Gary, start the clock. And gentlemen, let's uh let's start drawing. All right. Uh, Kelsey, I got to ask you, though, uh, tell us a little bit about that animation um, thing you did with the dog. Uh, you want to show it in case anybody here hasn't seen it? I'll bring yeah. it up. Yes. If you can, uh, yeah. yeah, if you can share it on yeah. your end, don't make me go look for it. No, no, no. I got the file right here. I can get it. Uh, <laughs> should hopefully it'll have good audio yeah, if I share the actual to, file. Back to us in 30 minutes. Huh? I said you're asking me to search for it and get back to you in 30 minutes on it. Yeah, well, I usually wait till a little further into the show uh, for that kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. This this one is a it's a Halloween animation. Uh, I was doing just a little bit each night uh, when I probably should have been drawing on Shane's uh, story for accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but no, I usually waited till after I was done with that for the day, and I was been tinkering on this for. Uh, Probably about a month, I guess. Just a couple, like an hour or two a night. You could share it. Actually, it's on the on, on the bottom. Okay. <clears throat> All right. There you go. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Why isn't this not okay? I don't know. There, here it comes. Okay. Okay. There we go. There you go. No dogs were harmed much in the making of that video. Uh, okay, so the question is, okay, I got two questions for you. One, why? And then uh, <laughs> two, how? Well, I've been messing with animation for years. Uh, in fact, it was like it was like one of my first loves before I kind of got into comics. I wanted to be an animator, but it was just always so difficult to do you know, anything uh, because of the technology, the cameras, the the skill level, any of that stuff. So you had to draw anyway, a thousand pictures. 
Yeah, exactly. I mean, that little short, that's less than a minute. It's 40 seconds, and it's uh, like well over 100. 100 yeah, you've been working on it since minutes. you were 16. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, but, I, that, you know, um, so I, I just kind of been tinkering with it lately, um, seeing where I was. Uh, and uh, I was doing various things for shorts to kind of get into the shorts program on YouTube. And um, I did the... Uh, I animated just that little dog kind of hopping down off the step just on a whim one day and it turned out to be pretty good. And then it turned into that because I knew that Halloween was around the corner and I thought, Oh, it'd be fun to do something for Halloween. And uh, so it wasn't like I planned to do that. Um, I, I probably not sending the right message. I sent, this is exactly what I hope to accomplish. Both <laughs> <laughs> easy in the chat is asking if the, is the dog's name scribbles. Uh, yeah. Oh, scribbles good one. The dog. There you go. That could be like my new mascot scribbles, the dog. Okay. So, okay. So what program did you use to do that in? I did that in clip studio. Clip studio has like a timeline option where you can, you can animate uh, just like Photoshop, but it's way better. Um, but it's still very limited. So I'm actually moving into this program called Open Tunes that uh, was developed for Studio Ghibli. But it's it's open source stuff. It's all for free, um, which I really like. You know me. If I, I couldn't find an animation program at the dollar store. So, you know, <laughs> I had so to get it somewhere. How much of that is actually you doing work and how much of it is you pushing buttons? Oh no! It's this is totally old school. It's, there's no in betweens in that. That's why it's all choppy. It's a lot of just direct sort of drawing. Um, but the benefit of doing it in Clip Studio or any of these programs that they have now is that you can draw. It's like using layers in in any art program like Photoshop. So you can, you know, quickly change. Like if the leg ain't working right, I can just paint in another leg. You know, it just depends on how detailed you want to do it. So it's all very simple now. And uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of like uh, Ralph Bakshi. And um, <clears throat> I was listening to an interview with him one time and he got really mad at today's youth. You know, he's like, uh, all you kind of want to be is you all talk about what you want to do, what you want to do. He's like, if I had access to half the technology you guys today, I'd be like cranking out movies. So he was like really laying into their <laughs> lack of of producing and so i and really took that to is, heart. he was cranking out movies before so <laughs> right well yeah he was doing it he was hustling man he was the kind of guy that would just go find money and i love and then, all the experimental stuff that he did in those movies or oh even, i love this even if some of it was really offensive you know I still yeah. like it anyway no he, well yeah I, no i love i loved uh bakshi's stuff you know i loved wizards even though <laughs> probably could use a couple of rewrites and uh yeah yeah it's all rough yeah yeah and like i just watched fire and ice for the first time just a few months ago i think we talked about it on this show and i thought i thought the uh the uh posing of the main character the chick was pretty funny at times because it was so ridiculously obvious that he was setting up a butt shot or a you know a boob shot or whatever uh but it was still kind of fun there was something about that sort of uh you know how he he approached things that was kind of interesting it was always interesting to look at you know well they um I, larry you're talking about offensive like some of his other movies like uh the you know like no, he, skin, I mean, things he, like that or i didn't want to get in details about it but this is a number of thing movies he's done that were like really really offensive and uh, right like i said i saw it as an experimental thing and I really didn't know what to think of him as a person for a while until I began to see interviews with him. <laughs> yeah. Became, Talking about the guy that went from doing Mighty Mouse. He's very New York. Uh, <laughs> to doing Fritz the Cat, you know? <laughs> yeah. He just seemed like one of those guys that he wanted to do a thing and he would do whatever it took to get to do that thing. You know, like yeah. he'll find money, he'll panhandle for it, he'll... Uh, break into an animation place and steal all their crap and make his movie. You know, he's he's just I, I one of those, those guys, guys had no stories. limits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was an interesting guy. Um so so what you're saying is you're you're aspiring to be the next Ralph Bakshi. 
Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm not quite so edgy, uh, <laughs> but his, his kind of attitude about it, his kind of go get them, you know, don't sit around and wait kind of attitude towards things um, was very inspirational to me early on. So, uh, Kelsey, uh, Art T. Bears in the chat. Hey, Art. And he referring back to your uh, animation, that dog was hot. <laughs> I'm not um, sure what exactly hmm. that means, Art. Yeah, hey, I, you know, if that's your thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Art. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did you guys have trick-or-treaters last night? No. I'm. Well, you live out in the swamp. No one's going out there. No, I put out all the traps on the lawn. None of them were, they were all empty this morning. <laughs> you're, you're giving away gator fritters and no one came. Yeah. Like, you don't uh, set out the bear traps? Yeah. They're just me? Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> oh, Pedro's in the chat. He says the Mighty Mouse uh, in 88 changed animation forever. Oh, yeah? Can you? How so? Yeah, how so? Pedro. Man, I remember. So, yeah, I remember that being. They had so much stuff different. in there that was so obvious. I'm like, how did they get away with this? Oh, you mean in Monty Mouse? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was one of those situations where they uh, they kind of like conned their way into that. <laughs> so I think uh, there's this uh, one episode where this this character called the cow is fighting all these like other characters, and then somebody says, you know. How is it that you've been able to survive all of this? So he pulls his shirt open. He says, because of my baby-proof vest. And I didn't know what that thing was. And one day I realized that's a condom on his chest. Oh. On a regular Saturday morning cartoon. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, man. I think oh, I couldn't wow. help it, man. He was just edgy. Yeah. Uh, Aaron, you have a super chat. Yay. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Atomic Beast for $5. Thank you, Atomic oh, Blast. Sorry. <laughs> How dare you? Actually, I like Atomic Beast better. Uh, can Aaron accidentally spill water on his electronics power cords again? I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. <laughs> I'm going to try to avoid that. Uh, We'd all like to see that. It sounds like David did spill water on his. Yeah. Look at that. Okay, uh, uh, Aaron, could you read Pedro's uh, answer to the question of changing animation with Mighty Mouse underneath the super chat? Uh, yeah, uh, Pedro Ang says before Mighty Mouse animation was trapped by licensed toy deals, Mighty Mouse made animation fun again, but it also doomed the funding. Yeah, mute David. Let's see if that's him. Oh, we know it is. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, okay, got a, David, a David you're muted. Uh, David, mute yourself, and that way, if you want to say something, you can unmute yourself and then comment. And then, uh, there you go. Thank you. Shut up. <laughs> Wait a um, minute. Jimmy Reyes says, is it true that Rob Liefeld hated the chick with the big bootie? I don't know, Larry. Is that true? I don't know. I, I, I only spoke to him like a few times, so I don't. I have no idea. Hmm. That girl he's, did he's not. He's a real religious up, dude, so maybe that had something to do with it. <laughs> is he really? He likes the athletic type. That's actually more what it was about. Like the athletic type. You, yeah. you didn't give her, you didn't give her big shoulder pads. That's why he didn't like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I remember we were that. Uh, I don't know when I first. I think I first saw your stuff, Larry, on X Factor, and I was like, and I I like you know big monster guys. So I thought I thought the way you handled the uh, uh, big guy is that his name. No, <laughs> it's like Guido. Guido, yeah, but he had a name. Strongman. 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 
I thought it looked really cool and very that's kind of like that stylization you had in your art I thought was really really cool well what happened is I wanted I wanted it was like a weird kind of thing where I walk uh I get called into the office and a guy asked me if I wanted to take over X Factor and I said sure and then I said uh I said who's going to be on the team and it was like the only two characters that existed at the time was was Havoc and Polaris. So he says, he says, what do you want to draw? And I said, well, I always wanted to draw somebody big. I said, but, you know, I can't do the Hulk because the Hulk is in other things. Right. So he says, uh, you have any suggestions? And I thought for a second and I said, what about the guy that used to be the bodyguard for the Disco Dazzler? He says, you mean Guido? Oh, yeah. Wow. And I said, yeah. I that. So that's that's how we ended up with him in the book. <clears throat> and then I said uh, that I wanted to draw somebody with a lot of hair on their body. And he says, <sighs> he says that rain from whatever that other book was, New Mutants, mm. was available. And I said, okay. <sighs> and, then I, and, and then I said, uh, I said, what about somebody who runs really fast? He says, like who? I said, like Quicksilver. And he says, yeah, I guess he's available. <laughs> and then. Uh, what do you mean available? Else? They're all available. They're, <laughs> they're So what ended up happening? No, at that time, concerned. they were being real particular as to what. I know. Well, they're, they, they've always been like that. So, that's so, a, so then what happened like was that. I was walking out. Uh, I was happy, of course, I was going to be doing this book. And then I turned and I said, uh, can I do something with the costumes? He says, do whatever you want. Wow. Nice. And then I came back and I had the designs for the costumes. He just said, okay. <laughs> what is this? Said, so the people he, always he, say to me, oh, uh, so... So what was it like working with Peter David? I really didn't work with Peter David. I mean, I got a few stories, I mean, breakdowns, and then I just basically drew whatever I wanted. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he just added the dialogue to what I drew. Oh, so you, were you guys, okay, was that like officially working Marvel style or just ended up that way because you were just taking control that of the was, book? Well, I think it just worked out that way. I think it was... Uh, I don't think they thought the book was going to do anything. Yeah. But so uh, I was just allowed to just do whatever I wanted. I just drew whatever I felt like drawing. And then Peter just turned it into something. So it looked like we, you know, had collaborated, but there wasn't <laughs> much collaboration at all. <laughs> well, did they try to meddle more when like it started being a hit or like uh when it got popular, that's when they gave me a hard time. Yeah, yeah. That's when they wanted to change things and don't do this and don't do that. And but they were shocked when 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 the numbers came back for the first issue, and it was far more than they ever thought. Well, it really looked cool. That's why you know. It's like... Oh yeah. <clears throat> Someone actually in, earlier in the chat said that it took him a while to get used to your stuff because it was so different looking than the yeah. other X. Well, that's, a, that's what most people said. I really don't even know what I was doing. I just, <laughs> all I know is that I just didn't want it to look like everybody else's stuff. Right. So I started just going to, you know, I was designing the, the, the costumes from like European magazines at that time. And there was a couple of stores in New York City that sold that kind of stuff. Now you can get that stuff everywhere. But at the time, it was kind of difficult to find that type of stuff. So I was going to these European fashion magazines just and they had like the craziest designs and stuff in there. So I was gonna mention that because like we, we there was like comics before Larry, it's like bell bottoms and like fake clothes and you know weird stuff, and then you got Larry and in introducing the world of comics to fashion, and it was like well, I went up. from I went from just the tights and stuff, and I wanted to have them wear actual clothes. Yeah. That was like a revelation, man. That's why I liked it, because you pick it up, and like the first the first part of the issue, 
uh, already gets me because, you know, I mean, not just the big guy, but like this room right here. I mean, you, I got like, you got statues and guitars and like, uh, I guess that's George Bush on the wall over here. They're throwing darts at. I don't know. You got just all kinds of stuff. Well, you know, back back in those days, you didn't get much response other than the editor, because uh, you know, and when you would get like a letter or something, you know, the letter would arrive like you you they'd give it to you like six months after they got it. <laughs> so you never knew what the what people thought of anything. Oh so wow! It was just this freedom of just doing. You're just drawing your stuff. So no, the only really time true. I really got any feedback was when I would go to shows. I remember the the very first show I went to after X Factor had come out because I went from two or three people that would come to my table, like now, but back then. <laughs> I remember the first time <laughs> I went to the show. Man, it was about there was hundreds of people standing in line. Yeah. And the thing was, it was so impersonal. I was trying to talk with people, but nobody wanted to talk. All they wanted was just to get these books signed yeah. and then go stand in somebody else's line. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I, I, I like the idea of doing of being able, on the book, but there's something about that that kind of bothered me. Well, it's at those points, and I found this out when I was working on Wonder Woman, that uh, for most of the readers – or fans, or you know, however they'd be described themselves, um, they're fans of the character, or fans of you know, right. they're X Men fans, right? And because you're drawing an X Men book and a popular one, that suddenly you know we want your autograph. But then as soon as you leave that book, you know, it, they're they they're they're hot on whoever the next artist is well, on that. It was book. it was the whole beginning of the whole uh, uh, with people just buying like. Right, the boom. 15, period. 20 copies of every book. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they were just trying to get as many books signed, and they'd go to whoever the next artist was at the show to get them to sign 20, 30 books. Yeah. The speculators. That's right. So then they when, found out you know, in the year 2000 when they tried to sell you know all their spawn number ones that they weren't worth anything because everybody had a, 10 copies, and they're all in near mint conditions. Well, the when I... The very first show that I went to after Tribe came out, well, not the first show, the first appearance was at this comic store in San Francisco. And I remember I showed up and I thought we were in the wrong place because nobody was there. <laughs> <laughs> nobody. They, they didn't have my name up on a the wall. There was just nothing. And I remember coming back on the plane and I was so depressed on that. So the very next week, I was scheduled to go to the show at uh, some place in uh, Long Island, New York. And I really didn't even want to go because I was still suffering from depression from, from that appearance. <laughs> yeah, I walk into the show and I got mobbed by a couple hundred people. Everybody had like multiple copies of tribe in their hand and apparently we we were getting complaints that other uh people had tables were complaining that our line was crisscrossing in front of their table so <sighs> they picked up our table and they moved it all the way to the back of the auditorium oh man and we're sitting next to dumpsters and stuff right <laughs> so we're just signing and signing and signing so this guy comes up and he hands me like a three hundred dollar, three hundred one, three one hundred dollar bills, and he gave uh, Todd the same thing. And and we were like, well, "What is this for?" He says, "Oh, I brought like eight copy, eight uh, um, boxes of tribes." And he said, "I sold all of them within like an hour." Wow! So then somebody else came up, and they. Uh, Oh, so he was giving you like your cut from it kind of thing? No, he was just thanking me. That's oh, all. Oh my gosh. Wow. So That's then cool. he uh <laughs> so then somebody else came up and they and they had us then we I spent the whole night signing like another like five three to five thousand copies of tribe number one. And then 
we went to the sh we went back to the show the next day and so not signed another couple thousand copies it was just like ridiculous well, so see, did that change uh did that really change your uh your game up i mean like was that i don't know that was just one of those just time everything in time just 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 kind of fell into place perfectly but um I used to one I thing to, I always tell people that you know uh X Factor 71, which was like the most oddest number ever, um sold I think like nine hundred thousand copies or something like that. Oh wow at the time. Yeah. So good old days. When Tribe came out, Tribe sold like a million copies. Yeah. And I and I can all and I can say to people, I one of the only people who've had my book outsell X book at its at its height. So I always felt good about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to I used to love it when uh, people you know next to me would have a line that crossed in front of my table because that's the only way I'd ever get people at my table. <laughs> I, you know, funny, I was at a, I was a sh I was at a show maybe about a year ago. And some guy who's working on one of the Spider-Man books, his line had crossed in front of, in front of the table where I was at. I didn't care. They people were stepping out of his line to buy art for me at my table. <laughs> well, he he did me a favor. That's right. Yeah. He used to go, hey, well, you're gonna be waiting there for 20 minutes. Why don't you look through my portfolio? You got nothing else to do. You know? <laughs> yep. So I there. I don't, I never get I never concern myself with that type of stuff. There are people who they they panic if if they don't get a lot of people at the table at the show or whatever. I mean, I've sat at shows where it looked like nobody was at my table, and I still walked away with more money than most of the people who were who were at that show. Well, that's the thing, so, man. It all comes down to selling original art. That's how you make yep. you know the money. And if you only need three or four guys the whole show to come by and buy something, and you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, I was at a show in uh, I think it was Tulsa, Oklahoma. I think it was. And you can look down every aisle at that show and it would be completely empty. There might have been five people standing in that show any any given day. So everybody there is panicking. People are packing up and leaving and everything. And I just had like maybe four or five dudes come, drop down a few hundred dollars a piece, and I walked away with a smile on my face. Yeah. <laughs> like so it's like nowadays you just you just don't know how this stuff is gonna turn out. I don't know oh, if that had to do with create next factor, but you know. Sorry, Larry. Uh, Aaron, get the cannon ready. Uh oh. Jimmy uh, Reyes. Who Jimmy am I? Reyes. Yeah, I'll read it. Jimmy Reyes is saying this show is not about you, Aaron. You're acting like it is. This is your acting like it's your channel. Apologize to Larry. Yeah, I'll. Uh, I'll uh, no, no, I'll apologize to Larry right after I uh, when I do this, Jimmy. Uh, here's what I think of your comment. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Larry. Uh, that you had to witness that. Um, here we go. Aaron Louvier says, speaking of original art, what's the best way to buy some original art from Larry? Oh, yeah. Here you go, Larry. Um, well, you can send me a message, but there's a guy I'm working with now, and I'll just... I'll send I'll send him over to whoever that to that guy and he'll he'll take care of it. So message on what Facebook is that where yeah, you're at? Facebook, okay. Instagram, whichever one. Okay. And uh, someone wants to know. Said Murdoch says Tribe was great. Was there ever a collection of it? Not yet. Oh wait a minute! That sounds like uh, <laughs> I'm, working. I'm working on it. Sounds like this new issue uh, you're working on is all wrapped up. Oh no, I'm still working on that. Hey, let Jimmy Reyes know that I still got a job for him to do. <laughs> what, like your roof? Like what? <laughs> well, yeah. From what I understand, it's worse than that. So uh, <laughs> it's worse than that. But I had a little bit of yeah, a little bit of uh, back and forth going on in uh, one of the green room chats. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh crow yes indeed that's uh joanna cassidy you're correct who and, uh, what joanna cassidy for what 
behind over my shoulder. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, with the snake. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and and hey back to Apex. Vacha, take the pleasure from this serpent. Sorry, Jerry, that's the only line I remember from that. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, that's plenty. That. That's plenty. Jerry <laughs> Rasco says at one of my earliest shows, I was lucky enough to be next to Wilts Portasio. Oh. And when the con personnel came and asked if I needed his line moved from in front of my table, I said, absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> you know how good this makes me look? Yeah. Um, now, we had, I, I sat um, down the aisle from Todd McFarlane, and it had the same thing, man. We sold more stuff than any convention I've ever been to just because his line went right past ours. <laughs> Or actually, like it went past the whole table. I think everybody on the table was doing well because, like, they were all lined up. They must have done that on purpose. <laughs> yeah, the line starts Sometimes there. Sometimes that kind of thing works out in your favor. Sometimes, yeah, yeah not always. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. hey, Larry, well, got, Larry, huh? can you share the story about how you got the um, X Factor job, the one you told me? How I got uh, Oh, Larry. I, uh, what are you about? Okay, Larry. Yeah. There was one point I was trying to kind of phase out of Alien Legion. I wanted to do some more mainstream stuff. So I was picking up, you know, a book here and there kind of a thing. So then I got approached by the, the X Factor editor, asked me if I wanted to draw a couple of issues of some X Men book. But then he just, he never got back to me. So time went on, you know, and then just nothing ever happened. So I was working on this book called uh, Double Dragon. And I think I was maybe about three or four pages into it. But I wasn't moving fast enough for the editor, who was this guy, Fabian. Fabian, so nice Fabian, to see you. Yeah. yeah, so Fabian fires me off the book. So I had come in there and I was filling out, you know, this little payment slip to get paid for the four pages. So I was kind of upset because I didn't really have anything else at the time. So I go and I'm walking down the hallway and I said, yeah, when I run into this Bob Harris guy, I'm going to let him know what I think about him not giving me those <laughs> text books. <clears throat> so I just happened to go past his office and I hear his voice say, hey, Larry. <laughs> and I step up to the door. I'm standing there looking on me with my fist balled up and everything. I'm like, I was like, yeah. <laughs> he says, would you be interested in taking over X Factor? <sighs> but all the anger in my body just went away. My voice went up really high. I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I walked in there and in a, in a period of, I don't know, probably no more than about 10 minutes. <laughs> We decided what the X Factor team was going to be, mostly based on what I said. <sighs> and then I walked out, and that was it. And I always tell people, that's never going to happen to anybody else in comics ever. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to be given that kind of freedom to just pick whoever they want. It's like a good lesson and just have a pause before you burn that yeah, bridge. Yeah, <laughs> think, think for a second, you know? Yeah. That, is, that has saved me quite a few times. <laughs> Have you ever had anything happen like that since? Uh, not the, you know, just just um, being really. able to have, just ever be able to have that much freedom on a book to like create I mean, things. I, I, you know, the freedom thing for me is something that I just kind of decide on my own. Yeah. It was like when I did the book, when I did the story that Kelsey inked for Bram Nolan. Uh, after I got the the basic breakdown of the story. I just stayed out of communication for about a week or so <laughs> with anybody. That sounds I do whatever I want. I don't want nobody looking at this saying, I got to change this. I got to change that. Yeah, and yeah. I drew and inked the entire story. So then I sent it to him and he looks at it and he says, this looks good. And yeah. That's it. <laughs> no editorial at all. <laughs> yeah, that's how to go. That's how to do things. Right. All right. So I'll see you in like six months, Aaron. Yep. <laughs> well, that story only took me, it only took me probably less than a week to do. 
Yeah, it's great. Well, Kelsey, the problem is if you wait till the very end and then send me the pages, then we have to there's so many stuff to fix in like a very limited amount of time. So you bet there's probably not a great uh yeah, you got it. You're assuming you're it works fix- that works sometimes. <laughs> you know? I heard uh, earlier you were talking about wizards. Oh the movie. Oh yeah, the movie, yeah. Yeah, I heard it downstairs. I just wanted to make sure you're aware that it's the worst movie probably ever. <laughs> In the history of mankind, yeah, Shelly's not a. She hates the Dark Crystal and, oh, Dark wiz- Crystal, like and Wizards. Worse. What? You don't like Dark Crystal? That's the fire. Oh, look at that! See, she just doesn't get it. Just doesn't it, get it. Ugh. It's not in those days. Way. In those not days, we didn't have anything else, so we just took what we could get. That's right. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what? Did, and then our son got me a little. What did he get me for my desk? Oh, that little pog. A uh, little pog, yeah, with a spoon and one of those Muppet things from the the television series when they did Dark Crystal. Netflix did the Dark Crystal show. One of those oh. little little. Do you never saw that, Kelsey? No, no. It's a good. Miss anything? Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> it was, it was well, I know Shelly probably didn't like it, but no, it was no, it was pretty no. good. Oh, come on. I think I'd rather have my eyeballs dug out. Well. <laughs> Anyway, so my son got her a, uh, there was like this little elf potato head thing, one of the characters in there. And, uh, and it was really cute. It had a little tiny spoon, yeah. but it was something like they didn't have a nose. Something about them really bothered me. I, uh, did you let them down easy or did you like, oh, this crap again? <laughs> oh, we laughed because I, were, it, I well, as you can tell, I'm, I'm really quite shy about voicing my opinion. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I did take it to work, and the kids were like, "What is that?" And I was like, "Exactly." <laughs> I don't. But he was no kind of cute with a little idea. spoon, and I sit him next to what's the crap, crap, mega crap? Boy, yeah, I have one of those pounding fist on the desk. So, yeah, from the movie, and in a a light up boogie boogie. The boogie's cool. Yeah, the boogie's cool. Oh, there you go. So All one right, out well, of three. Eight, eight. I just came in to check in. Oh, hey, that? Ange. Aww. We're, uh, I don't know, Larry's doing something, but we don't know what. I'm afraid we're all going to be embarrassed by the end of this show. He's going to uh, just drop well, on that would be a normal show, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, she's on fire. Oh. Oh. Just, Man, Shelly just won the episode. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the four pain pills. Don't That's encourage why. it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I just uh, I just saw some video about the... the uh, marriage failure rate, so you know, be careful. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, keep pushing your luck there. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Sir. Keep pushing, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, Aaron, work on your timing. <laughs> Read the room, dude. <laughs> Thanks to uh, I'm going to shout out to Marcus Killigrew. He's been uh, sharing links to our campaigns uh, awesome. as usual. So thank, thank you, you, Marcus. Oh, uh, you know that. That uh, gives me a moment of pause here. Let's uh, remind everybody that everybody here has a campaign that's active right now, except Larry. But Larry, I think, is um, he's hinting. Oh, he at like he's something working coming on it. Soon. Awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've got Kit Carter, Planet Doom, graphic novel. We're over uh, 51K in the first week. I want to thank all you guys for backing early and backing often. Appreciate it very much. I can actually now sure. pay Kelsey to color it. Yay. So, we get to eat next month. Uh, David has uh, Bass Reeves. Now you yeah. you you tweeted out, uh, David, that uh, look they're looking to fulfill in January. Is that correct? That's what I read. He's muted. Yeah, yeah okay, because yeah. he has <laughs> audio problems. Mm. So that's going to come to fruition. So you guys get out there and back that before it disappears. Uh, Gary, of course, has Brush with Destiny, which will be closing out on this very show next week. Ooh, and sure, or sure, sure. partial closeout. He's going on to Graham Nolan's after this oh, nice. as well. And Kelsey, of course, has got a sketchbook of like it's like six thousand pages. Yeah, all the uh, scribbles. Uh, you will find the links to every one of those campaigns in the description of this video. So feel free to uh, visit early and often. So the question like was, I happy about your win last night? Yes, yes. I was very <laughs> happy because for the rest of the year it will be good things, right? right. Not I lost again. 
you won't have to hear him complain for the entire year. Yeah. Until I'm next like my Husker football team. Dang yeah. it. I am still complaining about losing to Reeney. So I tell uh, you, you cannot underestimate the boob factor. Yep. He just totally underestimates it. Yeah, get some, Aaron. Maybe you'll have yeah. some better luck. <laughs> I don't know if I want to win that badly. Oh, okay. All right. Well, maybe mm -hmm. if I get good ones. That's right. But you were a professional, you know. <laughs> it's all about the cash. But you, you were really wanted it. Craft. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Maybe. So, uh, Kelsey, do you still not have a phone? Oh no, I do. I have one. <laughs> Still have a yeah, I, I actually do now. Yeah, and I answer it sometimes. Why you want to call me? <laughs> well, it like you want my digits? <laughs> I'll have to call you at one point, but they said you didn't have a phone. I must be looking pretty good right now. Larry Stroman wants my digits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, Kelsey, is it a smartphone or is it like a flip one? No, I do. I would love a flip phone. Uh, where is my phone? I don't know. Yeah. It's somewhere in this house. I know. I do have one though. I got. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll have a flip phone if I allowed it. I have um uh I don't even know what it is. I'm like so not interested <laughs> in the whole like phone game. Um, yeah. Uh, I just need phone that works, and I'd love to have the old flip phone so I can play Snake again. You remember Snake? No, no. You know, remember it's just like a little snake that goes around on the screen, and you just push left, right, up, down. Just move them around. Oh, that sounds like the video games we grew up with. That was a yeah. game. Atari, yeah. Tank Battle. Yeah, good times. Oh, oh. Tank, Tank was awesome. Oh, yeah. Remember, we thought that was the coolest thing ever. I was like Pong. This high tech. Woo. See, the thing about Pong was the longer you played, the faster right. it went. Oh, yeah. Got a little, got a little tricky there at the end. <laughs> a little tricky. Yeah, I got a I got a new um, iPad, and I used it for like a couple of days, and it's sitting on my shelf over there. It's not even charged. <laughs> oh my gosh! I just thought I, I haven't really found a good I use for it yet. Sketching me. Seven months of basically being in bed with my back. So yeah, my iPad and I are. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like waiting rooms would be great. Oh my gosh! <laughs> yes. Have to go get my like. Tires rebalanced or something sitting in that little room. Yeah, but you gotta you gotta charge it. So it'll oh, uh, good point. Yeah, touche. Yeah. A little bit of electricity <laughs> required. Yeah, battery's yeah. not included, right? <laughs> All right, I'm inking. I'm just saying. Hey, so am I. Way ahead of you, pal. I know Larry's already Aaron, like, uh, getting his why are you the, Aaron, why are the only? The only one that announces when you're starting to eat. Just to uh, let everybody know. Because I've got to find out where Kelsey's at. Yeah, he's trying to make oh, me nervous. Right. <laughs> random uh, just task. Know I'm ahead of you. That's all Aaron, you know. Random task is number 509 on Kit Carter. <laughs> What's that? Random. Ran task. Oh. Random oh, oh, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. Oh, we're over 500 backers Ooh, already? Oh, yeah. Nice job. Yeah, random. You realize it's like, like, chewing gum in the classroom you have to bring enough for everybody so that means yeah <laughs> um, and what number are you for the other ones is that what you exactly. say exactly yep well he's saving his money for the new tribe book that larry's almost done with <laughs> well he's numbers uh 32 uh 54 and 87 on mine <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> that, that explains your number. Your uh, why you, oh, you got your uh, oh, dang it. I let you did. We'll have to check the printer later. Well, hold gentlemen. on a second. Back to uh, um, Kelsey's pad. Random what? tap. Oh, we're scrolling here. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Steam bot. <laughs> Spam bot. Boy, I butchered that. Spam bot. Can't you use Here, put your glasses on, man. Pad? Like swap what? between your your PC and and pad on the fly. Um, uh, probably. <laughs> With the iPad, like swap between your PC. Translate. Kelsey has no idea what he just Meaning, said. Like, can you airdrop it, kind of thing? Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kelsey's really struggling <laughs> now. Airdrop what? 
I'm just getting. And, I'm getting uh, to that. I, I've done this kind of crap uh, since the day computers were invented, you know. And I'm like, now I'm getting to that point where I don't want to learn anything else. I'm not, uh, I think I'm done. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm like that too. It's like, yeah, technology well, I, doesn't seem to make things easier or faster. No, oh. no, no. It's kind of getting in my way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I gotta have Shelly fix everything. I'm like, will you fix this, please? I have no clue what this is going on. And I don't want to know. I just want it to work. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kind of the geek of the house. Um, I have you to remember my things. mom. I think my mom was with Josh and we needed something printed and we weren't at home. I was trying to explain to my mom how to print it. And we finally said, Will you put Josh on the phone? He was like three. <laughs> <laughs> Get him to do the, the computer, as he called it, the computer. Uh, yeah, I was like, Mom, just give the phone to Josh. He can print it. <laughs> oh my gosh. Probably could, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I actually could. I asked him, how'd you I remember when I was go, about, the internet? Uh, I remember when I was about, I was probably about eight or nine years old, and I was standing in a bank with my mother, and it was these couple of guys talking. And the guy was saying, man, all these terrible long lines that are in here. He says, one day, he said they're going to have a card that you can use to pay for everything, <sighs> and it's not going to be any more lines. <laughs> well, he was happy. Right. Right. It's really? just as many people in the lines now. Yeah, I yeah. know. Ever, man. Use your card. I remember we used to say to my mom, "How you have money? You still have checks." And she'd be, "Yeah, you know, right." Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I remember what, in teaching, I used to tell the kids, "Like, oh, you know, we had to like." warm up our food on the stove <laughs> you know oh, yeah, all no. the things that they think is so rough in our vcr it was like thousand dollars and weighed like four thousand pounds yeah well at least you had one i had a beta <laughs> <laughs> actually they're supposed to be better this was Quality. oh my gosh i don't even remember I don't know about better. They didn't rewind. You had to watch the movie oh, all the way to the end and, and then start over. <sighs> Beta did really? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, it was right. good because I had like a handful of movies. I had uh, um, uh, uh, what is it? Star Trek: The Motion Picture, um, Smokey and the Bandit. Oh yeah. Uh, Animal House. Oh, there you go. Oh yeah. And uh, Urban Cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I watched all of those over yeah, and over yeah. and over. <laughs> really talking about technology track try tapes. describing try describing a rotary phone to, to a right a kid that i had days. to i was explaining that to the kids or we had a a question in the ap physics curriculum that talked about um a record player or a turntable and they were like had no idea what it was so i had to like google what? and show them and i was like oh yeah but now they've made a company now they're yeah they're what oh yeah, called? right. Can, can I go buy a vinyl? Yeah, my daughter thought they were called vinyls. She had vinyls. no idea that it was vinyl. <laughs> yeah, they're vinyls. A vinyl. Now she has a ton, but they're all. What is, she has, everything from Queen, ACDC. Yeah, all of these seventies classic rock. Oh, she's and a Beatles. total. Oh, the Beatles. the Beatles. Yeah. I raised her right. Yeah, she's a Beatles <sighs> fanatic. What did she go see? And, and Ringo Starr was in it. In that concert last year, yeah. Ringo Starr and his traveling all star yeah. band. The guy's like 82 years old and still up there doing it, you know. But she went to that concert and then told us that one I don't know what song it was that she started crying when they were singing yeah, the she's song. Like, I was like, like, Oh my gosh, from Beatlemania in the 60s, yeah. Oh, look at that old man up there. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. She wouldn't have liked them back in the day. It'd be like, Oh, who are these young punk kids? Yeah, Give <laughs> them old men. Yeah, what's <laughs> 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 old men? Kids cry when they see me too. Was it Journey that she saw in concert? <laughs> yeah. Toto? Journey, Toto. Uh, Toto. She's, yeah, she's having good I memories. Of the down in Africa. That's right. Yeah. That song makes no sense. Why? He's it, blessing it the rains in Africa. Do you it's know? not about anything. I mean, it's well, about Africa, I guess, but it's I'm blessing the rains in Africa. <laughs> what does that mean? You bless the rains. What does that even mean? I don't know. Ask him. <laughs> See, you can't answer it. It makes me Aaron, you're getting all worked up. Let's talk about this some more. Oh yeah. It's part of the mystery of life, Aaron. You know. I bless <laughs> the rains down in Africa. I, 
I, well, now I have that song in my head. Thanks. Sorry. Well, we had the Muppet Tre Treasure Island earlier today. So Walked around the house going, when you're a professional pirate, you don't have to wear a suit. Well, I don't know that song, so I'm sure it won't oh get stuck God. in my head. Oh, my God. Muppet <laughs> Treasure Island. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Oh. Aaron's getting called out. Colin in the chat has said, says Aaron hates Africa confirmed. <laughs> oh, oh no. Cancel time. Cancel no, time. No, no, no. <laughs> I just oh. want my songs to make sense. That's all. That's all. Is that too much to ask? So right. well I'm going back to bed. All nice right. to see you guys. It's all right. <laughs> Good luck. Enough showtime everybody. Put your hands together. Gravity Thank you. For a while. <laughs> Enough gravity for a while. Oh, yeah my back is no point. <laughs> I was trying to think of one of those songs that didn't make any sense, like uh, um, what is that one song from Cake? Uh, hey, I don't even, that's what? something you eat. I've never even heard of that. Yeah, see, that's what I'm talking about. It starts with the name. You wouldn't. Even... <laughs> Not the good one. There's like a great uh, bass line. Um, I don't even know why I'm talking right now. I don't either. It's interesting when you think <laughs> of like <laughs> all the songs that you grew up listening to, and then finally one day you realize what the meaning of the song was. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like I remember when I first found out what Little Red Corvette was about. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> David, do you know what it means? Uh, yeah. Oh, he's uh, muted. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Raspberry Beret means the same thing, but uh, well. I never hands, found out what head meant. He got what? all four issues of Nightmare in Blue yesterday. Oh, far out. So this is, wasn't he asking about uh, Nexus? Kelsey, do you remember that? Yeah, right. Yeah, the Nightmare art Blue. is tight as hell. I'm not sure if that's a compliment. Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, it's black and white too, so you can see all the you know lush illustration on. Yeah, display. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I like how they printed it. It seems like just nice paper. I don't know. I really enjoyed that series. I don't know what it's about, but no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I bought it for the paper. You what? Yeah, na, 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 na. I'm here all week, folks. <laughs> so does anybody still use sketchbooks heck yeah man i got like 30 of them full i've I never been a sketchbook guy but i'm trying no i saw i saw adam hughes's sketchbook pages in the 90s and i'm like i've got to be that cool i have to do that and so i started doing it and yeah well, what about the dudes? His books are legendary. Yeah. They are. Yeah. yeah, but those aren't sketches. Those are drawings. They they are. No, yeah, there's that's... a lot of lot of sketches. He works a lot of stuff out in in those. But then he also does paintings and in, in his sketchbook. Yeah. Well, I mean, I I remember I bought his sketchbook. Uh, he published one like way back in the day, and uh, in it he talks about going to uh, uh, art class and just right. sketching and sketching and sketching. And the teacher was like, why don't you just find the right line the first time? And uh, I don't know what that was, but it hit me like a ton of bricks. So like I, I was trying to do that ever since. Who Still not able to do it. Jack Kirby? No, I don't know. <laughs> find the right line the first time. Quit erasing. Uh, everything, man. That guy yeah, is that, always learning. Yeah, I'm sure the instructor didn't realize that, that Steve was better than than they were so they <laughs> tried well, to take maybe they did, that's why they said it you know i gotta find something to criticize this guy right well i wanted to ever since then i've tried to do a sketchbook but you know my sketches didn't look as good as his so i'm like <laughs> <laughs> well, i didn't want to keep going with it I'm like this sucks <laughs> i mean that's what i started doing was doing not finished drawings but pretty tight i mean they were pencil drawings but like if i get a concept for a like, oh, this would be a great print or, you know, something or just a, uh, you know, a story idea, but you kind of encapsulate it in, in a drawing so that you can come back to it, you know, and, and remember sort of what you were thinking. And, uh, you know, so I when like I said, when I saw Adam's sketchbook and it was like my, my sketchbooks were full of stick figures until I saw Adam's. And I was like, all right, I got to I got to bring up my sketchbook game, you know? Yeah. 
And uh, so I started doing that and doing better work in the sketchbook, which I guess is kind of stupid. But at the same time, it was like it seemed like that was what everybody was doing. So. But he was making a sketchbook to show people. Most people don't do that. You just you you draw just for the fun of it. It's not for the purpose of showing it off. Well, that's true. But if you did, you guys see the the crumb documentary? Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. So would he, he end up trading like uh, five of his sketchbooks for a house in France? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. He's yeah, he's doing uh, yeah. those to sell. Right. So there's there's some value in uh, putting a little effort in your sketchbook. That's all I'm saying, Kelsey. Have you sold your sketchbook? Oh. Uh, yeah, for a uh, cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> it's extra large. Uh, yeah. See, I'm not have even. Have you that all seen the documentary I, I about uh, a Jar Giger? No. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I know it's out there, but I've not they, seen. It. They they said that he never actually sketched anything when he did those paintings. He would just oh, do the paintings. Just and, like uh, pure instinct, I guess. That is a very creepy documentary. <laughs> when you a, see his living guy. room, he was a key, creepy guy. Yeah, yeah. He was his like creepy. dining room table is made out of bones and stuff. Yeah. It's like, yeah. <laughs> did he end up? Was he the guy that took his own life, or was that to somebody else? No, else's? he died. He fell and died. He died. It was an accidental thing. Oh, really? I yeah, he fell that. and because he was kind of feeble, yeah. so he fell and that's how he died. He fell on his table full of bones and. Uh, yeah, well, he should have softer, uh, you know, <laughs> things to land on. I guess. Yeah, you know, <laughs> not bones. <laughs> Bone shard furniture. Oh, it was why? It was the guy that did the design work for the Batman movie that killed himself, right? Yeah, Anton first. Yeah, that guy did some cool stuff. Yeah, he was awesome. Why are you thinking about killing yourself? What are you talking about? Not yet. It depends on. Uh, you, depends you got on the name it. wrong. It was no. it was Anton head first. Uh, oh, please. Oh. <laughs> People who want to kill themselves usually don't tell anybody. Yeah, well, for real. Yeah, Aaron wants to every time he loses this sh episode. This show. It's not a competition. There's nothing. <laughs> oh, to do. okay, right. <laughs> a bunch of uh, friendly artists getting together and uh, you know pushing <laughs> each other to do their very best work. That's all it is. Or pushing each other off the cliff. <laughs> 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 or in front of a bus. Or you're gonna, yeah. now, you're gonna you're gonna give Larry the wrong message and he'll never come back. So. <laughs> Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, can we? Oh, yeah, suicide. No. Yeah, can we change the subject? Please? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So, do you guys go? Do you guys ever like on Halloween? Do you take? Are you guys like movie guy or monster movie guys that would uh, like make sure that you watch a certain amount of uh, horror films or monster films? For Halloween, like that's the your excuse that time of year to to watch those things. No, no. I usually watch horror films throughout the year. So exactly. Why, why, <laughs> yeah. wait till, why wait till no. Halloween? Yeah, so do I. But it's like an, you know, like uh, last night was Halloween, right? <laughs> yes. I believe so. Right, right. I forgot. I forgot it was Halloween. I went out, went to the store, and stopped by an ATM. And I saw this weirdo. He's like this middle-aged guy dressed like a punk rocker. Mm. And I'm thinking, oh, man, I mean, how old are you? You're not pulling this off. And I thought, wait a minute. Oh, it's Halloween. I'm <laughs> oh, yeah. <an> idiot. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I, I remembered uh, uh, just like two days ago. So I got some candy. I put the bowl out there and put a sign that said, please, just one a piece so everyone can have some. And uh, actually, we had a couple bars left over, so it didn't, they didn't get greedy this year. But um, so I, I purposely set out. I said, you know what? I'm going to watch Phantom of the Opera. And uh, so I watched it until I got tired. And so I got my way through. <laughs> Ronan says that that was who I was seeing was Shane Davis. <laughs> mm. Could be. But he was actually a, older than Shane. We have a local theater here, and um, they had. Uh, they had like this monster movie a thon marathon thing on Saturday. And uh, so I went at 8 30, they capped it off with Werewolf of London. So I was like, I gotta go see that on the big screen, baby. So that was my 
Halloween movie excursion. I watched about 10 minutes of uh, Army of Darkness. And then I, <laughs> that was it, huh? Yeah, that was about it. <laughs> you know what I really got irritated with is um, American movie classics, right? They start, uh, and this has started probably 10 years ago, where every Halloween, they all they would do is show like Michael Myers films. I'm like, this is American movie classics. Yeah, okay? yeah. And it was never like Halloween. It was Halloween 2 or Halloween 5, or Halloween 15, and you're like, how is this a movie classic? But I guess he keeps showing it enough it becomes a classic. I don't know. But so once There's only so many times you could show Cat People or, or uh, you know, King Kong or what. I mean, what do you show? I mean, how many old great horror films are there? Eventually you're going to run out, right? Yeah. So yeah, you got to start showing Halloween five <laughs> yeah but what i'm saying is they show that like every that's their staple now instead of like oh bride of frankenstein it's oh. um five the return of michael myers and you're like again oh so you know just a personal i had this uh this woman i met at a show in uh tennessee i had never been to tennessee before so i hung out with this woman and we eventually and then it ended up having a relationship. So, but I had never been to her place. She lived out on this farm out in uh, Clarksville, Tennessee. So, one of the first things that I, uh, I was trying, I was trying to say to myself, this could not be. I kept seeing like every like southern stereotype I've ever seen in any movie or anything. All the they're place. real <laughs> yeah and they were like all these real people so we uh so i'm there visiting her and then she was gonna go you know the way her the, the farm was set up there was her place then across from her place was her mother's house which looks like it was built back like in the 50s or something then across from that was a grandmother's house would look like it was built back in the 1800s i don't like where this is headed so I go, so we go to the grandmother's house and it had this rocking chair out in the front, you know, quilt with the quilt on it. And, and it was all kind of beat up and gray. It looked like it was falling apart. So it looked like, you know, stuff you would see like in a horror movie. So I go inside and uh, I'm standing at the doorway. I'm hearing an echo. Is that me? No, nah, it's got to uh, be David. David. All right. So <laughs> I'm standing at the front door talking to uh, the, the girl who I was seeing and her, and her, and her granddaughter. Then suddenly the shadow appears in this doorway on the other side. And it was Jason, right? Big, huge dude with a plaid shirt and overalls, and he had a machete in his hand. Come on, I'm, now, that, I'm, like, I'm like, I'm looking at Jason, and he's just giving me the meanest look. But it was a black dude. Okay. He just he giving me the meanest look. So I waved to him, hey, how you doing? No response. <laughs> he's just staring at me, and I'm starting to get nervous now. So I slowly reach my hand behind my back, and I put my hand on the doorknob because I'm ready to take off running out of this place. <laughs> So she looks at me at one point. She says, what's wrong? I said, there's a guy standing there with a machete. And she looks at him. She says, oh, that's, that's just my uncle. Don't, don't worry about him. I said, but he has a machete. He's staring at me. So it was like a, a culture. It was like a culture thing. that I just I was living in New York City at the time. So she kept wanting me to come down there and move down there with her. And I'm like, this is just, this is just weird. <laughs> <laughs> on top of it, uh, her he just gets father, night terrors. Don't worry about him. <laughs> no, her father owned all of this land down there, and his neighbors were these old time members of the Ku Klux Klan. Oh, <laughs> so when she kept trying to get me to come down, I'm like, I, I, I said, I can't come and live down here. She says, Why not? I said, This, this is this environment was just too weird for me. And she says, oh, don't worry about these people around here. You know, we grew up with the people, whatever. So her father had had a, a, a stroke. And he was in the hospital for a long time. So 
his neighbors, the Ku Klux Klan, members of the Ku Klux Klan came down and farmed <laughs> his land for like a few months. Oh, wow. Basically, basically just to help him out. And I said, this is just like surrealistic for me. <laughs> I, I can't get with this. <laughs> So she ended up she ended up being angry at me because I wouldn't come down and, and live with her. So that kind of ended that relationship. You know the clan, good neighborly folk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll take care of your land when you're in her sick. It was it my was grandma crazy. sitting on the porch didn't have yeah. a big goiter on her neck, did she? <laughs> oh yeah, that would have completed it. Yeah. <laughs> it was just it was just too different for me. Ah. Nice. Sounds like my neighborhood. <laughs> So you were born and raised in New York City then, Larry? No, I was born in Boston. Okay, but still yeah. like large city environment kind of guy? No, I just, yeah, I, I've always liked cities. So um lived in New York for, I don't know, about 10, 15 years. Then I lived in uh, Berkeley, California, which was right right across the water from San Francisco. That was kind of a weird thing too. Mm. And then um, I lived in Chicago, Detroit. Detroit was that was that's a whole different kind of a <laughs> environment there. <laughs> and um, I've lived I've lived like all over places, but now I'm like the next city over from Boston from Boston again. What uh, did you? Uh, when were you in New York? Um, like about what time? That was like when you were working on X Factor and stuff. Yeah, that was uh, about. I moved to New York probably about eighty one, and I stayed there to about. I don't know, early early nineties, ninety one, ninety two, something like that. Did you get involved in like all the the comic scene? You know, since you're going into the office, you got. Probably rubbing well, shoulders used to, with everybody. I used to love going up to the office, you know, just yeah. hanging out with different artists and stuff like that. And uh, that was one of my favorite things to do. Who did you, know, you meet? Stuff. Anybody like crazy? Anybody like? Uh, well, you well, probably one met time, everybody. I don't know what I'm talking about. One, <laughs> one time, I was I, I came in to fill out for some uh, for some work I did on Alien Legion or something like that. So I'm standing outside the office in this. There's some some weird looking dude in in, in like a, a worker's overalls. So I thought it was like a, a janitor in the building or something. He didn't have a machete, did he? No, he didn't have a machete. Okay, all right. But he, he's, he's talking. He's talking to the editor who I had at the time. It was Carl Parts. Yeah. And they're talking and talking and talking. I'm looking at the time. I'm about to miss putting in to get paid because it was going to be another couple of weeks before I got paid again. So I was about to barge right into the office, and then and then he was done. So he comes and he walks past me. We never said hello, nothing. The guy just walked past me. So I go in, I fell out, and I and I made it just in time. So then so then Carl says to me, he said, "Oh, Larry," he says, "Have you ever met Steve Ditko?" Oh, and I wow. said, "No, why?" He says, "That was just him standing right there," and I was like. At the time, nobody had even seen him. Wow. So I come out the office, and I'm running around the office trying to find him. <laughs> he, was, he, was gone. he was gone at that point. Dang, man. Ditko, huh? Wow. Just vanished, man. <laughs> Completely vanished. <laughs> Henry Bemis wants to know, can Larry be a regular? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing uh, Wednesday every, every week? <laughs> but you also said, back, back in those days, you should run. You should just run into just just different people, and every once in a while, they'd have some celebrity up there for whatever reason. You know, you run into them. But I, I miss those days. What about like uh, you see any like real any fights in uh, in the? In, bullpen or anything like that you see anything shocking any like uh no nah, that was nah, never, they, kept, never they held like it together <laughs> yeah never nothing like that i mean people were mad at each other but that was about it the bullpen was just like a bunch of of, of assistants doing production work it wasn't like you know you didn't see like yeah, but they were, they were cool dudes. And... <laughs> yeah but i mean I, I went to visit 
you know, this is not nearly in that time period. So it was kind of like, uh, you know, it was a whole different kind of vibe. Uh, I went when Axel Alonso was in Marvel and went to Marvel and it's just hopping, man. It's, it's crowded. There's boxes stacked up everywhere. It just looked like, like a fun place to be in the office. You know, it, it was great. And then DC yeah. was like really quiet. You'd hear that one phone ringing in the distance. Right. Editors <laughs> wearing suits and ties. And, yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah, these, these people talk in a hush. It was a whole different kind of thing. Yeah, you you know, if you want to get paid, go to DC. Want to have fun? <laughs> go to Marvel. <laughs> well, I, they had they had a bunch of desks when I first started working at Marvel. They had a bunch of like drafting tables, sort of in the middle. You know how the the offices were like always on the 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 outside of the building, so everybody had like a window, and the middle was where they had all these, you know, drafting tables and chairs and crap like yeah. that. So yeah. I got sent out there a couple times to finish something or change something, you know. And, you know, I think Tom Rainey was out there working on an X-Men double page spread once. Oh. Yeah. While I was working on what the, and everybody was, you know, mocking what I was working on. And they're like going, to, going over to uh, Tom and going, oh, my gosh, that's so cool. Oh, my gosh, that's so cool. And they'd walk by and look at me and I'm going. <laughs> but the best thing is if you if if you could ever be there when um you know after hours because sometimes we'd go up there and we'd be up there till like 10, 11 o'clock at night, just everybody finishing up stuff. And oh man. And then every once in a while we would go to the to the art supply room and steal some paper or pins and and stuff like that. <laughs> Found some old Gil Kane artwork. Hey, I'll yeah, take that's where all that original art went. No, Gil Kane was the one who usually stole other people. I know. Yeah. Really <laughs> <good revenge. laughs> that's that's funny. Revenge. Matter of fact, I did a, I did a, um, I did a uh, Alpha Flight annual, the first one. It was like a forty-five page story, and that just one day just disappeared out of the office. Mm -hmm. It was around that same time. So to this day, I still say it was Gil King that stole that. <laughs> Probably he, did, yeah. he, used, he used to take art and just didn't just go and sell it to art collectors. Anybody's yeah. art, basically. What? Well, you know, Charlin's yeah. got that, that story about, uh, well, actually, it wasn't Charlin who told me this, but that he was at a convention, and it was the Captain Marvel pages, I think. And some he was walking by this art dealer, and this art dealer had his originals uh, from Captain Marvel, and I don't even think it had been published yet. And he he was like, "Whoa, where did you get those?" And uh, he said, uh, "Yeah, that guy over there just sold them to me." It was Gil Kane walking off. <laughs> and so yeah. he runs up to Gil Kane and grabs him and says, "What the heck? You just did you steal my artwork?" And and I guess Gil Kane's response was, "Well, my boy, you caught me." <laughs> and, uh, that's so he went back to the art dealer and art, he, he made the art, he got the artwork back and gave the art dealer his money back and uh, gave the pages back to Star Wars. What? Yeah, yep, I think Gil that was, that was uh, used to being caught, so he's just, you know, resigned to to own it and not, not try to fast talk his way out of it. Somebody like, was yep. telling me the story about yeah. how he, uh, he had gone up and he brought these pages to... Uh, that he, some story he had finished. So he goes up there and he goes into the editor's office and the editor wasn't there. I'm not going to say the editor's name. He's a regular comic comic guy, but he goes up to the editor's office and uh, he fills out this little vulture thing that we had, that they had at the time yeah, to get paid. Yeah. So, so then he leaves. So this is around lunchtime. So the editor leaves his office to go to lunch. So Gil King goes back into the office <laughs> and fills out for the to get paid a second time <laughs> for the same story, right? So apparently he had done this a number of times. So then finally somebody up in in uh upstairs had was making a complaint saying, you know, why why do we keep filling the same thing over and over from the same from the same guy? And that was his response. It's like, oh, you caught you caught me, my boy. <laughs> and then that's where it ended. 
Oh my god! I oh. guess if he protested, it would keep going, and he's like, "No, he learned the trick. Just go, oh, you caught me! Ah. Yeah, yeah. that's on me." I and guess. I was like, "Man, people that get fired kill. from these companies for nothing, and this dude did that for years." Yeah, he must be like. I wonder if anybody knows. Did he like grow up poor in the city, and like you kind of have to like well, do all kinds of things to get around just, things? He was not good with money. Uh. He went out with a lot of women. Oh. You know, yeah, that's he what just, I heard. It was like you know, he was had he had a couple of ex wives or something. And he had to uh, owed payments to or something, so yeah. he was constantly. In that's what Marcus is saying that he had a couple of bad divorces. Yeah. That's hilarious. There was one guy who worked in a store there, and he said one day, "No, this was in uh, Florida." A guy knew who was working in a store in Florida. He says, "Gil Kane walked in one day and just says, hey, you know, I got some pages. You know, if you'd be interested in." And buying them, so they said. Uh, the guy said, "Sure." He said, "What do you have?" Gil Kane had a hundred and ten original pages, and he sold those pages for ten dollars a piece of his work. Yep. Oh man! And the guy bought them right there. Yeah, I would have too. Maybe um, Marvel was getting all the blame, you know, for not sending Kirby his originals back. It was Gil Kane the whole time. <laughs> yeah. There's one other artist who I will not mention his name because he's a he's another cool dude. And I was at his house one day. And as I'm walking around, I see a lot of Kirby pages up on the wall. So I said to him, are these uh, are these some of those like stolen Kirby pages? <laughs> so he holds his finger up to his mouth and he goes, shh. Yeah. He's like, we don't like to use the word stolen around it's, here. It's, we, uh, as we appropriate people, I just, I just can't tell people that story. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, statute of limitations and all that. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Gosh. <laughs> well, it makes you wonder not just about that stuff, but you know, um, uh, dang it, I can't think of his name. The uh, artist who did the uh, the Jaws movie poster. Um, Oh. That got that was on that was like twenty years ago or something was on um, tour at like a exhibit like a traveling museum exhibit. Somebody stole it and it's still missing to this day. So someone's got it in their uh, family room, I'm sure. Well, right. once it's known that it's, that it's you know been stolen, you can't sell it, unless, right? You know. I don't know if you can even display it. So, I mean, if it's yeah. in somebody's family room, well, maybe you know, a guy coming to do the cable is going to be like, wait a minute. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's a lot of guys, like guys who've, who've had people steal like uh, priceless paintings and stuff from museums and stuff. They're just people that just, they just like the idea of having something. Right. Even though know they know they're going to have to give it up at some point if somebody discovers that they have it, they just, they just <laughs> like having it. You know, Oops, caught me, Chief. Collect comic art that's the same way. Yeah. Roger Castell is the artist's name. Uh, uh. Did the Jaws poster. And yeah, that pretty famous that it just uh, yeah, just magically disappeared. I guess that's when you know that you've really done something, right? Is when someone goes out of their way to steal your artwork. <laughs> Nobody stole no artwork from me ever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's <laughs> Trust me, Kelsey, it's not an honor. Someday. <laughs> hey, I had my first theft when I was in junior high. I entered this, uh, they had this um, this contest called the uh, Oregon Art Open or something like that. And it was like high school art contest. And I was, for, uh, right since Frankenstein, I was just starting to see some of that stuff floating around. It was before it got published, but, you know, and it's like a look back and things like that. Hmm. And so I was just obsessed with doing these like incredibly busy detailed uh pen and ink frankenstein drawings and so i basically did my own sort of version of like a dr frankenstein in the lab type thing and i was yeah i think it was probably i was 14 or 15 you know it wasn't like brilliant but um so i entered this art contest it didn't win anything but it was the one piece that got stolen and so my mom my mom was like well look on the bright side you know someone yeah. really wants it. <laughs> Well, the Thanks, other Mom. the other way to look at it is that they the thief thought that nobody would miss it. 
Oh, 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 oh Gary, jeez, I can't stand you, man. I <laughs> <laughs> Gary's got such a unique perspective on things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, remember earlier, uh, we were back in the green room, Gary was saying, oh, yeah, I used to be Aaron's number one guy. Yeah, now you know why he's not. <laughs> Can only take so much of that stuff. <laughs> Gary, we're not friends anymore. I mean, how often do you have to actually say that to somebody? But I actually had to, I think the word <laughs> came out of my mouth. Gary, we can't be friends anymore. I can't take it. And Gary's like, oh, you say it. You always say that. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, I mean it. No, this time I, I really mean it. I could have a dollar for every time you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be a rich man. Uh, someday. Someday, Gary. That's right. It'll all even out. <laughs> Speaking of, of thievery, uh -oh. when, I was, uh, when I was in high school, we won the, uh, the league uh, championship uh, in basketball. And one day I noticed that they, they had the championship trophy displayed in a in the school office in a, in a case. And it's like, what's it doing here? The players <laughs> that get to take it home for a while. Oh, Gary stole it. <laughs> so I noticed that the case was not locked. <laughs> so I um, put it on Ladies my and gentlemen, the next it home, I put it on my mantle. I kept it for a couple of weeks, and there was this big thing, you know. Oh no, somebody <laughs> stole this. But, but that didn't phase me. I felt I had a right to keep it for a while. <laughs> so I kept it for two weeks, and then somehow it, it just, you know, mysteriously reappeared in the trophy case. Oh, and you never got caught. See, this is nope. before they had cameras and stuff, so. Uh, yeah, I had to. I had to fabricate a, a you know, a, of course, a story to my parents of why I had the uh, championship trophy in my room, and uh, why uh, they were sending bulletins home from the school about a missing. <laughs> yeah. <trophy. laughs> oh, he intercepted those each day from the, uh, yeah. you know, make sure. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I had intended to to take it back. I just wanted to keep it for a couple of weeks. <laughs> I earned isn't, this. That, isn't that they do with they do that with the Stanley Cup, don't they? Everybody sort of like shares the cup for a while, and then they give it. to I mean, that's else. yeah, it's only right. I mean, what's it doing locked up? At, well, uh, it wasn't locked up to keep people from stealing it, maybe, Gary. Yeah, yeah. yeah Gary, <laughs> did you think of that? But I just thought, well, they're not going to lock it. Then you know, then they're just asking for it. That's <laughs> right. They, they must not really care if they're not even going to lock it up. So I'll just take it. But you yeah. know, I I returned it, so no harm done. Okay. Did you? Did anybody find out it was you? No. <laughs> now they know. Yeah. Yeah. All, yeah. I'm sure they're all dead. All the people with. You know. <laughs> no. Wait a minute. Didn't like you didn't even share this information with your teammates. Like let no. them in on the joke. No. Because kind of no. I know they would. They would have ratted me out. <laughs> yeah. Little do you know, Gary. This is your life. Open, <laughs> yeah. Let him in, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We're gonna bring in the. Uh, Here's your old coach. <laughs> Little Miss uh, whatever from the secretary's office there. She's coming in and I remember when they... Yeah, I remember me. Yeah. There's some detective out there with a cold case that just yeah. like, cracked it. Like, <laughs> oh, my God. Case. It was you all along. But Do you remember that episode of Seinfeld? Do you guys remember that episode of Seinfeld? The librarian. The librarian. Yeah, yeah detective. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious. Ronan <laughs> says they're all dead. I got rid of them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. No witnesses. Yeah, no exactly. one could point the finger. <laughs> this is like the lamest horror movie ever. This guy has to like, you know, off everybody so they can't find out he stole a trophy for two weeks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I was just shocked on how easy it was. And the trophy, it was a championship trophy, so it wasn't, you know, it was like it wasn't like a little bowling trophy. It was it was impressive. And I just walked off with it. Now wait a minute, was this like during school hours? Did you have to wait till after school? It was after school, yeah. Okay. It was like it's like how dumb are those people you could steal it right in front of them? You're like you told the, the principal secretary, I'm going to go polish this up. I'll bring it right back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I 
I stole a, a magazine uh, from the grocery store once and I, I didn't know what to do with it. So I rolled it up and put it in my back of my pants. Wait a minute. What kind of magazine are we talking about here? <laughs> no, no, no. You couldn't get those kinds. I, it was probably like a, you know, like a truck yeah. magazine or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was all into like monster trucks and stuff. So uh, anyway, as I was walking out, it slipped down into my leg. <laughs> and uh, this is like at a time where we are were, you like, happy I, to see me or is that a magazine in your well no no all the way down to my the bottom of my pants so I'm like it suddenly looked like i had just one giant tube leg because it, <laughs> you know it unfolded a little bit and filled out the you know the form of the pants so quick thinker that i am i started walking with a limp uh <laughs> thinking that people would think i had a wooden leg i feel sorry for you right and I made it out of there. Nobody questioned my wooden leg. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. That poor kid. He's got a wooden leg. I've seen you in here before. Here. Take, take whatever you want. Yeah. You, you want some magazines? There you go. <laughs> no, I got plenty. Probably, thanks. No. <laughs> probably Tiger Beat or something. Tiger Beat. No, I used to actually get Yachting Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds strange. <laughs> well, clearly. You, if you, if you you know what's funny feel, is how I used to look at magazines like that, or wine magazines and stuff. Yeah. Like, why do these look so much better than like comic book fan magazines? <laughs> like, how come we never have the good paper and all that kind of stuff? I know. They don't have the good color representation. I had my art printed in a game magazine once. It was the best I'd ever seen my work printed, ever. <laughs> then and now. Like, I've never seen it as good. And I've asked everybody, what is it? And people were like, it's fluorescent yellow. It's like all kinds of weird, different stuff. I still have never found it. So, <laughs> Well, you know, I guess it speaks volumes of the business that we've uh, gotten ourselves into. Well, we can't even get the crap. Like, I can't even get uh, newsprint anymore. You know, like it's yeah. done. Yeah. I mean, you can get a certain kind of newsprint, but not that not that specific kind. Right. Well, Pete Sametti prints his stuff on newsprint, doesn't he? Yeah, but it's it's, it's still yeah, it's still kind of like a high bright kind of like mo you know more modern. It is newsprint. It does have a lot of that kind of stuff. I ain't crapping on what he's got. I I, I mean, I commend him for going out there and finding that. But like, there's definitely Ah, a little something, something that's missing. Remember, I don't know what it is. You remember, like, uh, in the 90s, like, the book I remember specifically was that Captain America run with uh, Mark Wade and Ron Garney, and it was printed on, like, it was like a higher quality newsprint. Yeah, right. And I, I always thought that was pretty cool, because it was still newsprint, but it was, like, better quality. Well, yeah, they, they, they even stopped all of that. Um that, that was up until like not that long ago. Let me see. I don't think I got any version. Well, I had a friend of mine. Well, like this stuff. I mean, this is newsprint, but it's. I, I had mean, a friend of mine, and he ordered a. Somebody was selling these spray paint cans with something where you could spray it on the comic books and make it smell like old newsprint. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. uh, because he said he had always liked that smell, and that was inspiring, inspiring, inspiring to him when he was uh, reading comics. But then you know he, he got scammed because it didn't make it didn't make the comic smell like newsprint. Oh man! <laughs> like it's like one of those ads they used to have in the comic books. Get onion gum, fool your yeah. friend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> onion gum, yeah. I remember onion having some of that at one point. I did too. I did. Make your friend's breath smell like onions. <laughs> well, no, it tasted like crap. I don't know if it tasted like onions, but yeah, I got some of that once. And the 3D glasses, remember, you can see through oh, the yeah. Oh, yeah, the I, I got the glasses. I also got the uh, Venus flytrap. Any of you get the Venus flytrap? No. It actually, I mine, mine was alive for about a week. Really? But yeah. And, and Oh. It, Somehow it, it didn't like the flies that I gave it, and it. <laughs> Look at Gary, it, man. Yeah, that, I mean, it actually worked. It opened up. You drop a fly in it, it would close down, and the next day the fly would be gone. Oh, now weird. the most disappointing one was the sea monkeys. Yes, that was just like little. Oh yeah, sea monkeys. Wasn't? That's yeah. That was. That it's was just brine shrimp, right? Exactly. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Well, could you grow it and then like fry it on the grill or something? No, no. Well, no, you, they're like little. They're not even cracklings. I mean, they're not. They're nothing. They're. Uh, it's like a mold or something. Oh, know, it's like, like the shrimp you put get in like ramen soup, actually. Yeah. Like those little. Yeah. yeah. Those are like the little stuff brine that the shrimp. whales. The whales eat right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I need to catch up on the chat. Um, yeah, Gary. Geez, do your chat. Here's some bullet is asking David, uh, are you excited to draw EVS's uh, fearsome? His pitch Isn't gave David me... gone? No, he's there. <laughs> he's still, he's, he hey, went Brian. to get a sandwich. <laughs> His pitch gave me Freddy Krueger's dream warrior vibes. So, Oh, now David, you got me. Are you there? Like I said, David's gone. No, I yeah. can see him. His he's chicken out. He usually chickens out later in the show, so I'm no, see, this is now. about right time where he goes to get a sandwich or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> David Fearsome Bull is excited about your uh, Freddy Krueger Dream Warrior comic. I don't think he... Where, wherever you I are. His mic is off. He can't hear us. <laughs> and then... Um, yes? Uh, it's scrolling here. 30 minutes, by the way, gentlemen. Oh, crap. Uh, I mean, great. <laughs> I see you're doing your uh, your new power color, green. Yeah, no, I was going to do, like, trench coat color, and then I remembered his trench coat is green. That's why I had to redo it. Were you Which guys talking? Me? No. <laughs> no, we've moved on. <laughs> um. Okay, let me go back to it. That, again. You know, that's read. one of the few things that I did that I have no idea why I did it. The what the green? Thing, I have no idea why I put him in a trench coat. Oh, man, I loved it though. I mean, you like, thought it would look cool, Dude, and it that did. Was that was the thing in the '90s was the trench coat. Yeah, it's like yeah. a trench coat is like a cape. Yeah. <laughs> okay, David, are you are you there now? I yeah, can hear his mic. <laughs> we can hear him. Okay, hold on a second. Let me reread that. Uh, where to go? I lost it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We got okay. just fearsome, <clears throat> sorry, fearsome bullet. David, are you excited to draw EVS's fearsome? He yes. Is, this his pitch gave me Freddy Krueger Dream Warrior vibes. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Do you even that. know what that is? And, and, Freddy Krueger no, Dream Warrior. I David, do you know what it is? No. No, I don't either. It's like episode uh, Henry uh, three. That was, that was the first one of those movies I ever saw. <clears throat> was it? Yeah. Yeah. Freddy That's Krueger. a good one. <laughs> Don't listen uh, to these guys. Henry Jeremek has asked this question a couple of times. Uh, sorry, Henry. Um, Graybeards and Larry, what are your top three comic book artists that have influenced your style? Oh. And and Larry, you kind of oh, answered answer that. that. Yeah. yeah. As far as my style, I have no idea. Gosh, do, you have like, uh, do you have like favorite three guys you look at or a favorite guy you look at a lot just because you like their stuff? Uh, probably like Garcia Lopez. Oh, yeah. Uh, like John Basima. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. You're in the right crowd, man. Yeah, that's probably my top guys. But uh, uh, for me, Larry's in that mix. Uh, Mignola, Michael Golden, Stelfreeze, um, uh, Katsuro you know, Otomo, everyone up, else. I ended up kind of be, be, becoming disappointed. I mean, disillusioned and disappointed by a lot of those guys when I met them. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you know, I was. Yeah, with, I was with, disappointed big time when I met. I, I wasn't. I wasn't appreciative of, of, of Gil Kane referring to me as my boy. <laughs> uh, well, he did that to everybody, apparently, though. So. I know, but I, it's different for me. Right. Well, that's I, why I made a I made a point to like talk about meeting you and how cool you were, just kind of hanging out with us. It didn't make it feel like it was like a that we were that you were like a pro and and we had to be behind the table. No, you were just like hanging out with us. So, well, what happened with the Gil Kane thing was I was at a show and he was a guest there, and it was kind of crowded, so. I see him kind of walk his way through the crowd. So he comes through the crowd and he walks up to me. 
And he says, excuse me, my boy. Uh, <laughs> might I borrow some whiteout from you? <laughs> I hold out the whiteout pen, and he takes the other end, and, I, and we're both holding on to it. And I said, Gil, am I going to get this back? He says, uh, uh, yes, yes, my boy. <laughs> my boy? He said, no, I mean, uh, Mr., I mean, uh, Larry, uh, Mr. Strowman. <laughs> like, right. So you everybody didn't... that's ever known him says he calls everybody my boy. And I said, okay. yeah, but it's different for me. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> you told me that. Hey, give him points for recognizing that's that so once true. you brought that up, you know. <laughs> like, I don't know what you so mean, whenever my boy. I tell any, whenever I tell anybody that knew him, they would say, and you never got that whiteout pin back, did you? No. <laughs> And I said, no, he came up and he gave it back to me. So when I told Howard Chaykin, he was like shocked. He said, Gil doesn't give anything back. Oh, so man. He came over to my table and he handed it back to me. If that would have been David, he would have said, why do you call this whiteout? You should call it blackout. <laughs> yeah. But I remember standing there and I was like, wow, I cannot believe it. Gil Kane is standing at my table talking to me. And and borrowing doing... white out, you know, <laughs> like how yep. weird is that? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of like strange. It's like when you know, oh, I can't wait to meet my uh, some of my people that I like, and then you meet him, and he's like, Hey, can I borrow that white out? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the reason they came over, they don't even know who you are. Yeah, uh, <laughs> your name again, Kelsey. Yeah, can I borrow that white out? Uh, uh yeah. Sure. Yeah, nice to meet you, by the way. Yeah. Uh, uh, David, by the way, uh, Liam Gray says that Evia showed him the pitch on air yesterday. Your concept art was fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, uh, Aaron, I'm sorry, Liam. Uh, sorry, Liam. Aaron, you have a uh, super chat. Oh, well. Oh, it's from <laughs> Gil Kane. Who would have thought? <laughs> <laughs> Wonder where his whiteout is there. <laughs> uh Liam Gray for two dollars Australian. Uh Kelsey, I want to hang out. Uh what do you mean? Like for dinner or like, <laughs> like hang out? Everyone your wants to go to dinner with Kelsey. How personal are we getting here? Because <laughs> there's a rumor that Kelsey buys. Uh yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that rumor. That is a that is a rumor. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's not what I heard. Yeah. The rumor is I, I send the check to Aaron. <laughs> that's right. Every time I'm he goes out to dinner, well, I'm writing it off for the show. You can take care of this catch. I'm like, what? I just pass it on down the line. Yeah. I think this is yours. <laughs> I've had you know I've had pretty good results meeting. Well, okay, that's not true. I take it back. I got into it with John Byrne, and uh, <laughs> uh, writes and never remembered me. But, uh, you know, other than that, um, oh, we're supposed to go around and do our influences, weren't we? Uh, writes and Frazetta and uh, Larry Stroman. Uh, huh? Yeah, wait a minute. Are you saying <laughs> that just because Larry's here? I, I don't think I've ever heard you talk Hold about on, Larry. Aaron. What do you mean, writes and? <laughs> oh, yeah. what no dude i am so i i would say and neil adams were like the three biggest for me growing up was rights and neil adams and uh Prisetta. so and yeah, as you can see i didn't learn anything from any of them but i never I got going, into i never got into neil adams and, until i saw him uh do those tarzan paintings Oh, those were oh, those yeah, are amazing. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. I still well, like I, those to this day. They're still amazing, yeah. Yep. <laughs> but I, I just wasn't familiar with his work. I mean, I had not. I mean, I saw, I saw his like. Uh, I was obsessed with Golden, so I was picking up uh, the continuity stuff, and I'd see him. He was doing like a a great uh, Frankenstein story in like the um, Echoes of Future Past book, I think. Yeah, he had like it was Dracula, Wolfman, and Frankenstein. They all sort of came together in this. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now, have have you ever seen a painted version of that? Oh no, of the no, painted version. He did about I don't know, maybe ten pages or something. So I was asking him, well, why don't why don't you ever finish this? 
And he says, oh, I would never make any money from it because it would take me too long to get it done. No. So he never actually finished it. But there's, there's a handful of actual painted, pick, painted, you know, fully painted things of that that looks just like those Tarzan covers. Oh, man. Well, now, was that, did he, were they inked and then he watercolored over the top of them like the Tarzan? No, stuff? these are painted. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Yeah, I got wow. Yep. I wonder who's got those. <laughs> Get get, get Gil Kane on it quick. Maybe he can get him. Gil <laughs> Kane, go to Gil, go to Gil's house. Yeah, he's probably. <laughs> Aaron, uh, you'll appreciate this question. Dad's Dan is asking, who are the top three comic pros that Gary Martin impersonated at a convention? <laughs> well, we know number one Stranko, but uh, I don't yeah. know who the other two are. <laughs> Gary cannot be trusted. If you've learned anything today. Uh, David, did you hear that question about being influenced by artists? Do you want to answer that? No? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we, we know uh, definitely John Romita uh, Sr. I know that one. He actually got me into John Romita Sr., it's um, hard to pick just three. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, it's well, that's the know. thing. You're always looking at whoever you know is doing cool stuff, and you're like, What can I take? Right. This guy? One of the sad things about you know, those guys, you know, the guys I grew up with buying their stuff, almost none of them turn out to be nice guys. <laughs> you know, <laughs> most of them were just like really just unlikable people, you know. Unlike uh, Stuffries was, was nice to me. Um. Of course, that's like a different generation. That's more like your generation, yeah. right? So, like, you guys were very nice, I guess, from y'all's dealings with that old school. And they're just doing it for a job, a lot of those guys, right? They're like, kid, I was just paying rent. Yeah. Well, no, you know, well, I, don't, and I don't think they were used to dealing with fans. Like, now oh, yeah. the fan thing yeah. is almost like a, a universal thing. But at that time, they, you know, them guys, they just didn't know how to deal with fans. And they found a lot of them kind of irritating. <laughs> I know I was irritating. I hung around. I hung around uh, Jack Kirby's table for like six hours, and his he wife was... was looking at me like, "Will you get? Will you go away?" <laughs> I'm like, "No, it's Jack Kirby. I'm staying here." <laughs> but when they let they let people go to his house and stuff, right? Yeah. Like, did that? Was he cool with that, or did that like bug him? Oh no, he liked that because he yeah. you know, he was home all the time by himself. He liked just having the company of people being around. Yeah, that's, that's what cool. I heard that that people would just show up at his house. Yep. And and he would he would always welcome them. He would stop drawing yeah. and and spend time with them. Like yeah, uh, everybody went over there. They wanted him to keep drawing. Steve, right. Steve Rue was famous for just showing up at people's houses. Yeah. <laughs> He's been been quite that. often. David just told us a great story or told me one about I think the dude was involved, but it was about Struzan. But I think you guys did that with the with the dude as well. Just yeah. showed up at his house. I know uh, he showed up at Alex Toff's house. Alex Toff treated him kind of bad, but he didn't care. He just hung around anyway. I think that's the common story I've heard about. Tov. Yeah, Toff was not like yeah. super friendly, is what I've heard. Paul Glacy told me a story that uh, one day someone knocked on his door. And, and Glacy was still living at his parents' house. He was drawing uh, Master Kung Fu. And uh, someone knocked on his door, and there's some guy standing there and says, Hi, um, we're look I'm looking for Paul Glacy. And, and he's, he's like, Well, who are you? And then he looks over and he sees this guy rolling around on his, his front lawn. I was like, What's going on? Who's that? What's this guy doing? Oh, well, he's just this guy that, that I. The hitchhiker that I picked up that he wanted to come to Paul Glacy's house. Hmm. And he said, Well, I'm Paul Glacy. Tell that guy to get off my lawn. <laughs> that guy was Steve Rude. He yeah. did <laughs> he'd been hitchhiking yeah. and been on the road for such a long time that just the, the sight of grass. He'd gone feral at that point. Right? Exactly. He just wanted to, you know, to have that experience of you but know. it all paid off for him all that stuff all that odd stuff paid off for him 
Apparently. <laughs> so the guy who knocked on Glacey's door was not a comic book fan. He was just dropping Rude off at oh, Glacey's house. But he had to go up to the door for Rude couldn't even go yeah, up to the door. Because Rude was busy. <laughs> it's like, hey, don't bug me. The dude, the dude's busy. <laughs> Glacey's like dropping off or picking up, or what is it <laughs> from Ghostbusters? <laughs> yeah. uh, we're dropping off. Get this guy. Exactly. Says he's the key master. Calls himself the dude. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I remember you telling me that story. It's like, that's crazy. I never had enough balls to do something like that, you know? Just sh show up and. <clears throat> uh, Henry Bemis says that Glacy was nice to him at a Portland show a few years back. I said stupidly, You had a run on Master Kung Fu. And he said, No, I had the run. On Master <laughs> <Kung Fu." laughs> what an answer, though. Good job. Which is true, because that's really all I remember from that book. Is his yeah. Story. Well, Zach was on there and did some nice stuff, too, later. Yeah, but Glacey's Glacey right. Was, was young when he was doing that. He was, like, still a teenager. He had the run. Well, yeah, <laughs> and it was cool, because he made him look like Bruce Lee, you know? His mask of Kung Fu looked like Bruce Lee. Yeah, that was the time for it. When was that? Was that the 70s, 60s, 70s? Yeah. Yeah. They were like, that's when Marvel was like, okay, superheroes aren't selling anymore. Are we going to do monsters? Are we going to do exploitation film and adaptation, you know, and kung fu stuff? And, and you know, I would have loved Marvel back then. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know. Yeah, yeah they, some of those painted, those black and white painted books that Glacey did was pretty nice. Like, um, I can't what do you think mean, of black and white and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Do you guys remember that? Um, uh, what was it called? The guy that, um, oh, Sable or no, uh, it was a graphic novel. I think Eclipse put it out. It was guy kind of looked like Jimi Hendrix and Clint Eastwood combined. He was yeah, that was that was Saber. That was Saber. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was cool. Sometimes that, that you was... look like sometimes you look like Jimi Hendrix, and sometimes you look like Clint Eastwood. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, like on yeah. the close ups, it looked like Clint Eastwood's it, eyes, you know. But then sometimes it that like Hendrix and... because of the availability of uh, reference, oh, yeah. maybe. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> but I remember picking that up. There was this. There was this um, weird bookstore downtown Portland when you could still go downtown Portland. And uh, it was called Weird Looking Herald. So you talking about no Looking Glass Bookstore? Okay, though I think that was probably before you moved there. No, I yeah, that was before my time. And you, they had like a whole section of underground comics, but you'd go in there and they had a magazine rack, and in the magazines they'd have stuff like Media Scene and uh, yeah. all the movie That's magazines cool. like Cine Fantastique and things like that. Media scene. Yeah, and then just sitting there was uh, Saber, you know. And this would have been really early 80s, right? I mean, it was like one of the first books Eclipse, I think, ever published. And I was flipping through it and going, God, this artwork's really cool. And then there was like nudity in it. And I was like, yeah, I'm getting away with something now. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they would have like rights and, you know, like they had rights in uh, uh, Edgar Allan Poe portfolio in the, gla in, a ca in the case, you know, it's like, they had stuff I'd never even imagined, you know, that was out there. You know, my my mother was a was a Conan the Barbarian fan. She, oh, she really? loved Conan the Barbarian. <laughs> wow, good woman. So she comes she comes home one day because my mother was like the most prudish person you could ever imagine. So she comes home one day, and she had a stack of like books in her hand that she had bought from one of the newsstands. She says, hey, Larry, I bought, you, uh, I bought you something. And I was like, what is it? So she hands me this book, and it had, like, these couple of robots fighting on the cover. I was like, oh, hey, thanks, Mom. I go in the room. I flip through it. And it was, it was the first issue of Heavy Metal. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So it had Din. Din was flying around with this gigantic thing flying yeah. through the air. So I'm like, what in the world? 
I said, you know who bought me this? And your mom gave So I called back and I said, I said, Ma, um, she was like, yeah, I said, uh, did you look inside this book you got for me? Just a she comic says, book. no, why? I said, oh, nothing, nothing. No. <laughs> And uh, I never, I never let her see. I, she's never seen the inside of that book. She's um, never seen all the other issues you bought after that. Uh, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I, used love love, I, I used to love heavy metal, and I oh, think yeah. that when we talk about influences, I think that mo that book really influenced me a lot because it was all these different styles. Yes, yeah, same here. And all these things and from all these different artists, and I just appreciated like almost all of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there's some really, really good talent in there. Yeah. Yeah. Aaron, what's the uh, clock situation? Clock situation is about uh, five minutes, Joe. Well, six minutes if you want to be exact. Oh. I mean, I yeah. Should, I shouldn't have started coloring. <laughs> now I'm not going to finish. <laughs> yeah. I'm close, yeah, but. Coloring faster now. Yeah, so I, I was at this uh, the San Diego Comic Con. It was way back, way back in the shoot. I think it might have been the late '80s or something. And um, it was the first one I ever gone to back when it was just a normal amount of people that went to that show. So uh, I'm walking around, and and Mobius was there. Oh, oh my god! So I walk up to him. I said, I said, hey, I said, you know, I've been following your stuff, heavy metal, blah blah, blah whatever. And he was like the nicest guy ever. Wow. So we talked for a while, and then I said to him, I said, oh, sorry for using up a lot of your time. I said, I got I to gotta go back to my table. He says, okay. So I go to walk away, and he says, hold on, my friend. Hold on, my friend. He says, come back. Come back. So I came back. He reached inside his portfolio case, and he handed me something. Oh, man. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm looking at this this drawing and I said, I don't really have anything that would be the equivalent of, of making a trade with you. And he says, it's for you. It's for you. Wow. Said, oh, cool. And I walked away. What it was, it was one of the storyboards for the original Aliens movie. Whoa. No kidding. Wow. You still got it? Nope. Oh. <laughs> I have no idea what happened to that thing. I think it was yeah. a woman I broke up with. Um, <laughs> So if it appears on a uh, heritage auction house, yeah. where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> that's such a common story though, you know, Yeah, getting like yeah. art and then, I don't know. Now I kick myself for half the things that I've let go of over the years. I, re I remember uh, uh, um, going to this one show and it had all of the guys from that studio book. Oh yeah. And, um, oh, that was I, I, I kind of got to, I could have got like Swamp Thing pages for like twenty dollars. Ah, like brutal! It, just, it didn't have any value to me at the time. At that twenty dollars, yeah. I could buy, right. I could buy like you know fifty ten cent comics. You know, yeah, yeah. Well, that was uh, night. Those Phil Sulings were. I mean, the comic. It yep. was called the Comic Art uh, Convention, and and Wrightson was the guest in seventy eight. I think in seventy nine they had yep. the whole studio there. Yep, yep. That's when I was there. Oh man! There's Reiston, uh, Jeff Jones, uh, Bernie Wright. I mean, um, uh, 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 Barry Smith, Smith. and Kaluta. Uh, you know, and Kaluta. Yeah, Kaluta. Yeah. Yeah, and Kaluta. He was there. And that, those see, I used to read about, like in the Buyer's Guide, uh, you know, that weekly newspaper about those shows, and just dream of actually going there. You know, because I was stuck here in Portland, Oregon. Strangely, yeah. I'm still stuck here in Portland, Oregon. But uh, um, yeah, it was just like that. Just seemed like like another world, you know. Yeah. New York. I was college. fortunate enough to come across so many of those guys, you know, moving around at the time. And uh, it wasn't until I really got into comics that I that I really learned to, when I speak to other people that you know how lucky I was. That I was able even to spend any time with a lot of those guys. Yeah. I spent most of my time as when I was breaking in, searching those guys out. Instead of like yep. befriending guys of my own generation, I was like constantly thinking <laughs> oh, yeah. Plug and Simonson and uh 
guys of that uh, that writes in. Yeah. And because uh, I, I wanted to say, I wanted to tell everybody I was friends with these guys. You know, <laughs> the guys that we <laughs> idolized growing up. Yeah, they're my. Uh, oh yeah, I'm hanging with those guys now. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. No one's paying. How that work out for you? <laughs> Not yeah. great. Aaron, no one's yeah. paying attention to what you're saying, considering like that, I, uh, like I used to. I never really paid that much attention to it till later on. But I used to hang out with Al Williamson. Oh, go wow. We go hang yeah. out at the comic stores, all kinds of stuff, because we used to run into each other up at Marvel at the time. And well, I never really realized how amazing it was. If you were living in New York at that time and connected to that scene, that's where everybody was at. Yeah, yeah. We all went out to lunch or dinner or go to the movies or whatever. Wow. Good times. Well, there wasn't crap going on in Portland. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, you had Dark Horse. I went to, I lived in Washington. <laughs> Before uh, Dark, I'm talking about, you know. Oh, uh, okay. I went there and started banging on the windows out there. And uh, <laughs> the I got to talk to Mignola because his name was in the phone book. So I just called him up. Oregon's great. I don't know what you're doing wrong. Why are you talking about <laughs> when, when Dark Horse's office in Milwaukee? Yeah, yeah, in Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, I actually cool. ran into Richardson and I didn't realize until because uh, I was banging on, literally banging on the windows there. <laughs> and he comes uh, belting out of a room, uh, out of the back door, going to the warehouse, which is the building next door. Across the street. Yeah, and I bump into him. I'm like, oh, sorry. And then I kind of keep going. And then I do one of those slow look backs like it was just dawning on me. I was like, ah! <laughs> <You know? laughs> he was already he had, gone. He had invited me to come down there because I was supposed to be working on a couple of things that none of them ended up actually happening. But I come down there and he's and he meets me at the airport and he says, oh, I decided to come pick you up in style. He was driving in this like red Corvette, the, oh, the one without the, without the roof. Oh, wow. And, and that was like the most uncomfortable car ride I've ever had in my life. <laughs> it was it felt like we were driving on the ground. We were hitting like every bump. I mean, I'm just like, this is awful. I said, but it is a cool car. <laughs> I know. Next time, like, pick, next time, pick me up in a Chevy, will you? Well, yeah, yeah. Two, two well, they're dudes. nice to look at, but they're not great to ride in. Yep, yep, yep. Two dudes in a in a convertible is, you know, kind of questionable. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, Mike is like six eight. You know, he was sticking out like a giraffe. Probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, uh, cool. Somebody in the chat is claiming that they Dark Horse hired them to do uh, Starship Troopers. Oh, I remember those comics. Who is it? Um, I don't know. Some guy. I oh. see. I love, I love how Gary. He's he's supposed to be in charge of the chat. He has no idea. Uh, <laughs> some guy's claiming. Yeah, some guy. Things. Yeah, is this some guy? His tag is Comic Art Pro Secrets. Talking a big game out there. Uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's like some guy named Howie. Shaken or something's in the chat. I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember uh, that, Ethan. I remember uh oh it a is a lot Ethan? of the dark horse stuff because I I he did I Starship to... Troopers. Is, is, is he really in the chat? You're burying yeah. the lead, dude. Ethan drew really Starship Troopers. <laughs> is he really in the chat? Yes. How a chicken? No. <laughs> <laughs> now, in all truth be told, Simonson occasionally shows up, but uh, oh, yeah. uh, Larry Ethan yeah. is in the chat. Jake Chicken was the guy that got me in the comics. Oh, really? Yeah. Like he was, he was the first guy who insulted me in comics. Yeah. He gets funny. around that guy. Yeah. Chicken <laughs> is the only guy that's ever called me fat motherfucker, and I didn't do anything. <laughs> It was a term of endearment, he though. Me, he was the guy that got me my first work in comics. <laughs> that was just his way of saying hello. <laughs> <laughs> I remember um, he was yelling at, at Aaron. Uh, Howard time? was at a, at a show, and, and he was like, after hours, you know, the 
convention hall had closed and he was like talking pretty salty and dropping the f word all over the place and and aaron aaron called him out and said howard what are you dropping f bombs all over the place and he, he was like yelling back at Aaron, like what are you in junior high school f bomb <laughs> <laughs> yeah i remember that but that was after i knew him i was just giving him a hard time the first thing he ever said to me i met him at a motor city comic con and we were in the bar afterwards and, you know, like Wrightson was there and there's some other people hanging out and he goes, oh yeah. He goes, you're the guy drawing sludge, right? And I go, yeah. He goes, yeah, your stuff doesn't suck. <laughs> that was the first thing he ever said to me. So, Well, that's not an insult. That was a compliment. No. I thought you said yeah, he insulted kind of. you. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, I know. That was like the nicest thing he's ever said about anyone yeah. I've ever heard. <laughs> I, I can't tell you some of the stuff me and him have said to each other. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I am absolutely sure of that. Do you realize Ethan being a chat in the chat has extended the 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 clock deadline? You guys are still yeah. Thank away. you. I kind of needed a few extra minutes. Oh. Yeah, we're yeah. You should have shut it down like ten minutes ago. All right. What? Okay, I'm almost done, and then we'll close it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works. Aaron's almost done. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not even close. I've got uh excellent. I've got, I've got yeah, the dude that on the bottom is you Did David like go to sleep or something? Yeah. He, starts, he he he's he worked on did you finish that Quicksilver, David? Didn't he because you start drawing another one after you colored the Quicksilver? <laughs> oh, he's doing two of them. No usually we hear the paper crumbling, uh but he's on mute. Well, he's got the mic off. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> you you gave up on the Quicksilver and you started a second one, or are you just doing two? Yes. Or are you having? Are you not, so I'm not sure. Who are you talking to? I, he's he's, he's, he's are answering you hand a signal. mental telepathy thing going on. Yeah. No, he's giving me hand signals. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I figured he was gone. Uh, he usually checks out several times during the show and goes like, takes a nap, has some has something to eat. Well, to yeah. see today, Dave has done two drawings and he's had two meals. <laughs> Damn it! I haven't even had one. All right. Uh, yeah, we're we're past due here. Larry's like, come on, man, I'm gonna go have dinner. What are you guys doing? <laughs> um, all right. Pencils. Are you guys uh, are you guys prepared to show your wares here? Uh, yeah. All right. I'll uh, I'll start. We'll work our way around. Larry, you're going to be last, so you get to work on it as a uh, little extra time there. <sighs> All right. I'll embarrass myself here. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you first. <laughs> All right, I didn't get it. I didn't get it done all the way, but you can see there's potential nice. here. It's still wet. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So I, did, I think I'm gonna steal that idea and do a do a, a pinup. Yeah, that's oh, I see. You got uh, you managed to get the big guy in there. Yeah, well, look at and I gave her like a extra big booty just for Larry. <laughs> Give those big old hips there. Yeah, yeah that I'm, looks good. I'll finish it. <laughs> like Kelsey's, well, that looks good, yeah. young man. Looks all right. Good you job. Keep, you keep trying, it doesn't suck. <laughs> Thanks, Howard. <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, so uh, you know. Not bad for, uh, what do they say? Not bad for government work or something like that. <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know. Is that uh, good enough for government work? That's what it is. Good enough for government work. Yeah. That's what it is right there. So, yeah, we're, uh, <laughs> but I, I used, I, I pulled some Stroman reference so I could get the costume design at least somewhat correct. And, uh, you know, so there you go. Uh, let's, well, you're, you're talking it down. That's actually, that's a nice figure. I mean, it's full of, yeah, full it of movement, you know, I mean, it's, it, 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 it has a lot of energy. It's, it's not stiff. I mean, you, I think you really nailed, nailed her, uh, figure. careful. Well, thank you. I, I'm a little, I'm a little shamed that I didn't finish the coloring, but uh, I do think that if this were a competition and I had finished the coloring, definitely top four. <laughs> okay. so, let's see what uh let's see what our good friend david williams has to offer see wait yeah see he did too oh well wow. i actually look at that, that uh quicksilver was real nice 
Yeah. yeah. David should get extra kudos for actually finishing a piece. Yeah, Dude, I was well, about yeah. to, I was about to complain. Because <laughs> <laughs> I've been on other shows with him, and he never finishes anything. I know. He never, he never finishes on this one. <laughs> you didn't notice that, did. that Quicksilver's foot is in one time zone and his calf is in another time zone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah it's great. It's got a lot of speed. Yeah, where's the speed line, David? Jeez, man. No, he doesn't need it. You see the body moving like that. He's got all the speed. Not the great piece. I love it. David is so good at pushing perspective and really getting Aaron. Know, are you dynamic eating? stuff? Huh? Are you eating? Yeah. yeah, I, got yeah. A, I got a Reese's peanut butter cup here left over from last night. <laughs> But anyway, um, <laughs> tell us more. I'm going to. Uh, David, push that Quicksilver center screen, will you? So we can see the whole thing. There you go. There, yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, that's 3D. I mean, it's, it's coming off the page. We should have, like, glasses. I enjoy his commentary on it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I keep leaving him room to talk and he's, and he's muted so it's like oh okay I can't do that <laughs> alright David uh, definitely fourth place today really good <laughs> top four at least Kelsey, yeah. oh my gosh Kelsey's going oh my goodness look at that <laughs> Dude. I couldn't help myself I got uh, multiple men uh, and they're all, uh, you know, I didn't do it. He did it. Maybe he did it. I don't know. And I, I didn't get the chance to oh, do the. Say, yeah, where's the, the actual the hand uh, print? Hand print. Hand print. We'll do it right now. Oh my gosh! How do you, dude? Seriously, how do you get that much stuff done in such a short period of time? <laughs> there we go. So now you can see the. Uh, <laughs> and they're all like uh, he's taking a photo that's, so that's the best ones <laughs> don't encourage him Larry Jeez. <laughs> oh. yeah you gotta sometimes uh, get it done fast those are those are generally my favorite ones too I don't dang, know, it, great. dang it Kelsey now I've got something else that I have to bid on in the next auction <laughs> <laughs> it's not manga so you might have some competition actually this time huh? um American uh, uh, Discord says, Kelsey, you went full interior front cover from Tribe, bro. Yeah, right. That's a <laughs> That was the goal. I gave her a different outfit, though. I was thinking a nice cheetah print would be great. Uh, random <laughs> Tass says, that's why Personal they wear part. French coats. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, so fun. fun uh, nice. I, I, it was X, X Factor. That's what we were doing, right? This is this is unfortunate. Space Monkey says Kelsey's brilliant. That's all we need. That's what we yeah. need here. Yeah, don't forget <laughs> to sign it. Yeah, I want to point out that the his composition, he didn't use the paper correctly. There's too much dead space over on the right hand side. So no, I just put a big, big signature there. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, let me uh take care of that right now. <laughs> 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 There you go. <laughs> so you didn't even use a straight edge. <laughs> what a barbarian. Jeez. <laughs> oh. Done and done. I probably still got a noodle with it because I'm not happy with the, the nuance of her, of her skin booty. tone. Yeah, exactly. And I want that nuance. To, there's no nuance. I want it to really kind of <laughs> sing there. And also, there's a little, a little more separation and stuff. Yeah. Zade says, okay, now I want that one more than Aaron's. Thanks a lot, Phil. <laughs> Jeez. All right. Okay. Larry, are you ready to reveal your masterpiece? Uh oh. Oh, whoa. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. God, look at they did the background on there, too. Is that like what do you got on there? Ink wash? Uh, yep. Yeah. I'm sorry. Man, about that. Lightning bolt. Yeah. I'm, it's like, it's like David's lighting scheme when he does his the disco lighting there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it kind of looks like you've drawn that character before. <laughs> Sweet. 
Oh, uh, man, can you uh, scan it real quick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks great. Yes. Oh, uh, Goody awesome. Two Shoes says, damn. Uh, yeah. Richie Dupe gives you a wow. Angela Curry says, whoa. Yeah, like um, the lightning, lightning bolt. The Jordy yeah, Gypsy not, says, that looks epic. That um, is not a sketch. You kind yeah. of broke the rules. Yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> oh, Brian man. Norton, Brian you Norton. Also, bids on it already. Yeah. Brian uh, Norton, all the way from Japan, is saying, damn, that looks awesome. Squip yeah, says, you, Murray Stroman for the win. It's not a competition, but uh, nice You job. made Aaron and David look so bad. Uh, earlier, earlier, when I was talking to David, he says, he says, you know, I'm going to beat you tonight, right? <laughs> David always so, says that. So for the first time, I was able to shut David up. That's why yep. he's been quiet for so long. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Couldn't deal with it. Famous uh, last words. Spam bot, know. thank you for the five dollars. Why does this says, stuff always have to have special effects? <laughs> <laughs> that's because he doesn't fit it. That's the color. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Uh, Spambot for five dollars. Thank you so much. Says we're all winners. Doesn't that make you feel good? Thank you. I appreciate that, man. Um, but it's not a competition. So yeah. <laughs> Henry Bemis says Larry wins for best beard too. I don't know. Kelsey might have something to say about that. I don't know. His is a bit bushier and way yeah. wider than mine. So I don't know. I'll give it up to him on this round. I might be longer though. Uh, sometimes that counts. Wait a minute. What do you? You know, it's funny. It comes off as being white, but it's actually gray. Now you're just bragging. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I don't know. Well, you know, it's a lot, you get the dramatic lighting effect going. So yeah, you're like a Rembrandt painting of yourself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, EBS says Kelsey Shannon's piece is breathtaking. Yeah. Thank you. There's uh that is bootylicious. That is a great piece, man. You just pissed me off. I don't know how you can get that much work done in such a short period of time. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just focus in there. Make sure. I'm just checking the focus. Just giving people what they want. <laughs> Here we go. Now this is this is what I this is what I like to hear. He says, We all know AA Ron is the best artist, and this isn't a competition, but Larry Stroman gets the W today. Actually, I want you got to scan it in and put it on uh, Twitter or something so we can check it out. I want to see it like with full full lighting. Yeah, uh, Razmane right. says Chiroscuro Stroman because that's your new name. Chiroscuro. <laughs> that's that. Uh, that's that like that you know that 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 like uh, pithy wow. home talk. <laughs> no. All right, guys. That's fancy uh, pants talk. Yeah. That is going to do it. For today's epic well, show, we're gonna, have, we're gonna have to do this again, Larry. Oh, yeah, anytime you want to come on, dude, we will have you on. You're a joy, and I want to thank you so much for coming on and uh, sharing stories with us and your incredible art. As we're all big fans of yours, you should know that by now. Um, right. <clears throat> I do want to uh, remind everybody that we have campaigns. Uh, please check out the links in the description of this video for uh, Kit Carter Planet Doom, Bass Reeves West of Hell. Uh, Gary Martin's uh, Brush with Destiny, which closes out next week right here on this channel and Graham Nolan's afterward. Uh, Kelsey has a sketchbook called Scribbles. You'll find both his and Gary's book on Fund My Comic. Again, the link in the description of this video. Larry has teased us about um, the return of Tribe, so hopefully we'll get more information about that down the line a little bit. That's pretty exciting. Yep, it is indeed. And uh, I want to thank everybody in the chat for joining us. We could not do this show without you guys and your support. We had a huge audience again this week. Uh, the show's growing, and we really appreciate you guys being a part of it and helping this um, helping this uh, channel and this show grow. Please hit the like and subscribe if you don't mind. Do it even if you do mind. And uh, so there you have it. Everybody enjoy the rest of your evening. Once again, thank you to Larry Stroman for joining us. And we will see David, you guys I'm starting to get a headache. What's that? <laughs> oh, yeah, because David, I'm starting to get a headache. Yeah. 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 Ripping us out, man. Uh, so, anyway, we'll see you guys next time right here on Graybeard Studio. Peace.